You ready? I'm ready. I'm flying to Cincinnati right after Hot Sheet. Not after this show. Hot Sheet, our Baseball America show. And then FT is going to be in Cincinnati. Wednesday and Thursday, normal show, 1 to 3 Eastern. We'll be at the sports book right across the street. Bet MGM Sportsbook right next to the ballpark. And then on Friday, we will be inside Great American Ballpark for Angels Reds. Please, weather permit. <laughs> because it's like 50s and rain, even though it's been a gorgeous week. Um, there's Ohio. a window in Cincinnati. On Friday, yeah. Ooh. There'll be a window. We'll figure it out. There's All a right? window. The Good shiver by the Todd river. Father will be there. What'd you say? Yeah. The shiver by the river is a real thing. I don't know what that is. Is that a thing in Cincinnati? Yeah. Just gets a little oh. extra cold. You shiver by the river. The river's down there. Not that you're going to go swimming in it, but. That's basically the last thing I would do. So Friday will be at Great American Ballpark. Todd Father will be there for the whole ride. Kratz will be on with us from his usual setup. AJ's going to dominate some tournament. They have something mm-hmm. like that. Dominate's going to be a big word, but I'm going to be playing in a champions tour event is this big boys what this this is big i mean you play with the champions tour guys but you also have a celebrity but it's the same guys i mean no mcneil obviously but like yeah a lot of the same small smarty fish mark Mulder. um you know a lot of the i'm just trying to finish 20th again <laughs> move on it's the guys that play 36 holes a day yeah versus me <laughs> could you All get right, there well, if you played more I mean, could I? I think I could get to where I could compete with them. Yeah. The problem is, is I just don't want, I don't have the patience to sit there and hit three woods for two hours. Um, <laughs> so for that, yeah, probably not. But I mean, if I play, I mean, listen, when I was playing a lot uh, a few years ago, I could finish in like the top 10. Now, beating a Marty Fish or a Mulder or even a Derek Lowe would be a little tough, but I, I mean, I could get to where I could definitely compete with them. Right. Beating them would be a different story. It'd be luck and have to make a lot of putts. Those guys are playing a lot of golf. Yes. I know that. Golf. Let's charge the damn mound. He's charging the mound. John Sterling is a legendary broadcaster who has done the Yankees radio call for over 30 years, and he's calling it. That's it. 5,420 regular season games called 211 postseason games. 211. That's well over a season's worth of postseason games that he's called. He's been a broadcaster for 64 years. He's hanging it up. Cheers. Just a fun personality. Kratz, you were a Yank. Did you get to spend any time with him, meet him, anything like that? Or, you know, you had to deal with the weird COVID season so you couldn't go within like 100 feet of each other? No, but I was there in 17 and spring training in 18, spring training in 20. So, yes, I got to meet John. It's my only regret. Only regret is never hitting a home run as a Yankee to hear what John Sterling's call for my home run would be. Did you have an idea for him? No, not a bit. Really? Mm -hmm. I feel like you're not tough, Kratz. We'll get him on at some point, hopefully, and we'll ask I need him to so. find out what it will be. Because he's he's got it prepared. Every everybody that gets called up, he's got one. He's not surprised by the moment. But congratulations. What an amazing career. Amazing mm-hmm. to be there that long on that team. Yeah. He's he was one of the best. He's one of the you know, when you hear the oh, Yankees win, oh Yankees win, you know, I mean that was it's iconic and he was great every time. We played the Yankees. His and him and Susie would come in, and Susan Waldman would come in and, and talk to us. And you know, I never gave her a hug, so she was you know a little bitter about that. But you know, <laughs> she was the enemy. Uh, but now I saw him uh, last year. I did a Yankees game and went in and made sure I gave Susan a hug and talked to John for a long time. And uh, just just a gentleman of the game, just awesome to talk to. The stories he has, both of them. But uh, you know, John, congratulations on a great career. You will be missed, and uh, we'll see if whoever takes your place can come up with some of the calls you came up with because a Stantonian home run. <laughs> Text message. <laughs> I liked that one when it came out. That was good. Yeah. He's 87 years old. For, on the 4th of July, he turns 87. Sorry, he's 86. I don't want to shortchange anyone. 86. He's been doing it for how long? 
64 years broadcasting Yankees. He's done 30 plus years. And also for mm. the dudes that follow him. And I know one of them, Justin Shackle, Emmanuel Burberry is the other dude. Um, they're not going to do what Sterling does. They got, you got to have your no, own, you own stick. Yeah. They're going to do their own yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah. So che- cheers to John Sterling. And now let's go to the other end of the spectrum with young dudes who haven't even played in the bigs yet because it is prospect call-up day. It really is prospect call-up day. There are now three names that really stand out. So Baseball America Hot Sheet is going to be on later for a deep dive on the prospects that we're about to talk about. But let's start with Jack Leiter, number two overall pick a couple years ago in 2022. He was a stud in college. It's taken him some time in the minor leagues. He's had command issues, but he's on a little burst right now. And they're going to see if they can ride it because Texas is really good if you look at their injury lists roster. They're really good. They can fill out almost an entire roster. So here comes Jack to potentially save the day. 25 Ks in 14 and a third innings in three appearances, two starts lately. He's 23 years old. Time to see if he's ready to go. Right? Great. Yeah. Let's go. Let's, Let's see. see Second overall pick. Did his dad play? Come, huh? Did his dad play? A little bit. <laughs> but think about Al. I remember seeing Al at a, uh, in Gainesville uh, at a game. Talked to him for a long time about uh, just everything. But I mean, this listen, this kid was the goods coming out of Andy, and everyone was like, "This kid's going to be on the fast track." He got to the minor leagues and he struggled, and he kind of had to take a step back and retool a couple things. Uh, you mentioned that his command was what was weird because what's crazy is in Vanderbilt he was like a command guy. He was a command guy with strikeout stuff, and you're like, "Oh, this guy's not can't miss." And, Something happened, but listen, he's back. Like you said, he's on an uptick right now, and the Rangers need starting pitching, so go get him. Jack, on Thursday, I'll be watching. I can't wait to see how you do because, I mean, listen, I love your dad. Your dad's one of my favorite people to ever to talk to baseball, and I uh, hope you do well. I mean, one one walk every two innings, he needed that time. Some people, it's okay to say some people needed time, even if you're a top five pick in the draft. It's okay to not rush somebody. It's okay that, you know, he walked some guys. And really, like, maybe that helped him learn how to pitch because everybody, we saw it last night, you know, with Araldis Chapman giving up giving up hits. Everybody can hit the fastball. So if you're only throwing 97, guys are going to hit it even in the minor leagues, especially if you're walking guys, if you're getting 2-0, 3-1, 3-2, putting guys in hitters counts. And on top of that, he's got a target on his back. Everybody knew who Jack Leiter was. So if there's some command issues, you're letting hitters, even minor league hitters, back in counts, they're going to get to you a little bit. So it's cool to see that he's gotten off to a hot start. And when a few when a prospect gets off to a hot start in AAA, especially at the you know older age of 24, which isn't that old. 23. Send him to the big leagues. He's not 24 yet. He's 23. Sorry. Send them to the big leagues. It probably won't be the whole time, but you know what? They need some arms right now. And this is one of the guys that will help their depth. Mm -hmm. He is 24 in a week, though. April 21st. Born in 2000. Yep. So you were basically on the money. Yeah, it's time. Check it out. And he's not 28. This is not a guy we're talking about. And that's fine if it is. But it's not like, oh, man, you know, late bloomer or, oh, it it really fell off for a while. Because there is a guy that um, I'll just mention it here because we'll talk much more about him during Baseball America hot sheet. And actually, I, I honestly don't even know how old he is. I'll look it up right now. But Forrest Whitley was a big prospect oh. in the Houston Astros system. He's 26 now. I saw Where him in the he? Arizona Fall League. He's still with the Astros. He's in, yeah. still in the minor leagues? He's getting called up today. Is he? Yeah. yeah. And he's pitching too. You know what's crazy about that is I remember when that whole thing – remember he said some stuff in spring training? Wasn't that Forrest Whitley that like – he said some stuff in the – I forget what it was, but he – about like uh, – gosh, it was something that. about the big leagues and how he was going to dom- – I forget exactly. But he had, some, he had some, some, some quotes you were like, okay, dude, you've never pitched in the big leagues. And then he ended up getting hurt and not making it yet. And, um, but he's fought through it and battled back. And, you know, again, good luck. Good luck. Yeah, the Astros need pitching help right now. But, oof. Forrest Whitley, I think it was the Fall League. I was doing a minor league game. I think it was Fall League, and I was like, holy shit, this kid's going to be good. Just injuries, ineffectiveness. He's 26. 
let's see. I mean, yeah, he's, he's not the big deal prospect anymore, but he'll come up for Houston. So both the Texas teams getting prospects. And then I know some Dodger fans are anxiously awaiting this little message. It is Andy Pajes time. What he a is, name. Yeah, it's a great name. You know, they're going to do all kinds of fun things with, with P-A-G-E-S is how you spell the last name, P- Pajes. Uh, number three prospect in the organization um, and a top 100 prospect. He certainly can swing the bat. He was dealing with a shoulder injury last year. Um, actually, what was it? The first game of the season last year at Triple A and missed half the season in 2023. Power hitting outfielder. And you're like, Dodgers, Kratz, where is the prospect going to play? <laughs> actually, it's funny you ask that. The Dodgers are not hitting in the bottom half of their lineup. This is a very top-heavy team right now, and that's why they're off to a but where, whose mid place, start. Oh, whose place is he going to take? Like who's getting sent down? Yep. Or, or who's going on the I.L.? I got to check. Chris Taylor, Glux, Altman? No. no, I think it's going to be – I think he's going to just mix into the outfield mix because but they for need – You have to lose a player. Uh, well, that I don't know. I don't know That's who's good. I don't know who's going down, but I think it's one of those things that they were hoping Hayward was going to be back sooner, and he just had a setback from what I read. So it might be a thing where okay, if he's not coming back now, it might be time to turn to pages. Oh, uh, he just couldn't resist. That's it. Yep, couldn't resist. <laughs> this um, dude's got some. This dude's got some thump, and you see Cuban. Cuban player, so you're like, oh, you know, this guy definitely was, you know, he's already matured into, he's still young. A lot of Cuban guys, a lot of Cuban guys come over and it's like, ah, they barely spend any time in the minor leagues. He spent some time in the minor leagues, but he also had 31 pumps back to back years. He went 31 and 26. And then last year he was hurt, but he's, he's off to a banging start already this year i get it it's the pcl blah 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 but he's hitting 371 with a 450 on base percentage and a 694 slug so he's ready to go it looks like yeah raw pop 23 years old and besides teoscar hernandez you know it's it's outman it's it's kike hernandez it's chris taylor it's the taylor chamel it's hey I mean, is probably the guy right who gets sent down? Yeah, yeah I, but, I didn't. I mean, see Chris who's Taylor. Sent. What? I mean, listen, Chris Taylor's been a good player, but this year is not a good start. It's only three weeks though. But 031 is 031. Yeah. And he had he didn't have a good year last year, if I remember correctly. Uh, um, no, I think he was down last year too, wasn't he? I don't remember that. Uh, I'll check out the old Google machine. I mean. Yeah, I mean, right now I mean, he is one for thirty-three this yeah. season. That's tough. I mean, two last years year ago he had a average. six seventy-seven OPS. Last year he was better, seven forty-six OPS. Yeah, he was an average player, but utility I mean, player. But but here's the thing, like, you know, you know, I know you were saying one for thirty-three, but it's still one for thirty-three. I mean, at some point they're going to say, "Hey, we That's- need to give you a mental break," and. That's a good question, because I mean, what what is that? What is that threshold for different guys? It's different. Like he's a guy that plays essentially every day, doesn't start every day, but will get in there a lot, and that's been his role forever. Like he's already p- played in fourteen games this year. But what where is that? Where is that threshold? Is it zero for ten for a bench guy? Is it one for fifteen for a bench guy? Is it you know, one for 33, that's a tough start. That is, there is, and half of them are, half of them are punch outs. So that's, that's an issue that it's not doesn't mean he's going to have that kind of, or maybe as Charlie Manuel said, move him up in the lineup because he's about to get hot. Yeah. Because you're, you're mentioning who he's been for years. The other yep. thing you forgot to mention is he's streaky. He's on the streaky list. Oh, yeah. oh definitely. Very streaky hitter. Really? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't hitter. have said that. He is. I feel like that term gets overused, but he's on the list. No, he listen. He, remember, he changed his swing and became a really good player, and mm-hmm. then kind of people yeah. caught up to him. 
and they were like, all right, we'll just throw him high fastballs. And he kept swinging at it, couldn't hit him for And then now he, remember, he went, he said, I think last year or, the, or maybe this year, I'm changing my tactics. I'm changing my tactics this year because the, whatever I was doing ain't working. Uh, I mean, listen, yeah, I know. I'm with you, Kratzy. What's the, what's, listen, Chris Taylor's a great dude. He's fun. Yep. Uh, done a lot of good things for the Dodgers. But at some point, you know, like the production is a production. It sucks because you just don't want to see guys struggle. Nope, you don't. Um, all right, let's get to w- one play from but, last well, night we that get stood this, out. One more thing, Kratzy. You know, you're like, you're saying, like, you know, or Scott's saying he's streaky. Like, we used to have this old bullpen coach named Art Kushner, and he was not a very good hitter, and he would make fun of himself. He'd say things like, you know, Louisville Slugger used to send me my bats already broken so they didn't waste the wood. But – he said, he said one time he went in to hit – he was like 0 for 17 to start the year, and he went into the hitting coach and goes, hey, can we hit early? Remember the hitting coach? And he's like, why? And he's like, because I want to get better. And he goes, do you ever think you might be hot? <laughs> <laughs> I used to say that Louisville – when Louisville would send bats, I would open up my box and they would have pom-poms in there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You ever think you might be hot? You'd always say that. <laughs> no, for He's seven, like, hey, well, I'm struggling. You ever think you might be hot? Well, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, okay. Was, I mean, yeah. Ozzy, between Ozzy and Cave, we had a we had some serious funny quotes going on. That's some entertainment. So one thing from last night, the Rockies played the Phillies. Phillies win the game in extras. We'll walk off from Christian Pache, but – The Rockies had a chance to win this game in the eighth inning. They have a full bench. So who do they bring on to pinch run? Opening day starter, Kyle Freeland, who does exactly what your worst nightmare looks like. He slides in, foot doesn't hit home when they review it. If it was a dude that does this regularly, he probably slides home safely and the Rockies win the game. Oh, but wait, there's more. He hurt his non-throwing arm. What was that? Is that his shoulder that he's kind of favoring? Right? That, his right shoulder that, there? Yeah, that's what it looked like. Yeah. What What are we doing? Full bench late in the game, and you're bringing in your pitcher? You're, you're a guy that you have locked up for a long time? You know, obviously, yeah, Phillies win the game. Rockies are terrible. But what are we doing? No idea. No idea why they brought him in there. Granted, good read by him. Great play by Real Muto. Great block of the plate by Hoffman. He was getting it down the line. He was not. He was not slow trotting. But that's the that's the move that we had to make. I'm, there has to be some kind of injury. They didn't. I was listening to Phillies broadcast because I'm a homer. But <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know of an injury or anything that was that was going on. Stallings came in to catch after that inning, but. I have no idea. Injury? What to their whole bench? I'm saying know. like a this guy's down today. Like he's not playing today. I, I don't yeah. know. I their don't whole know. bench, I guess. I don't know. That's super weird. Hey, let's bring in our first guest of the day. He was back in the dugout before. I mean, they had him back looked, in the dugout. You're saying health wise? Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, and they haven't announced anything. Have they? No, no. But it was last night, so they could it come in and bad. say something. Yeah, it 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 just it's not what you want to see. Well, let's bring in our guest. We can we can get him to chime in here and wonder if he's done any pinch running. There's the not past. a shot in hell this guy's ever pinch ran. <laughs> <laughs> no Alex would have been multiple For times. For who? I knew For it. For who? <laughs> For you, probably. No chance, dude. No <laughs> chance, bro. No chance. All right, what's up, dude? Let, give us the lowdown then. Did, did you, you pinch ran in a major league game? Yeah, I think I've done it a few times. I think I did it in Atlanta once or twice, and then in L.A. once or twice. They used to when I was in L.A. I used to use pitchers all the time to to, to, to pinch run late, late late in the game and extras and stuff. Now was the bench empty by that point, or they just most likely yeah. Okay, <laughs> that that's why this one was confusing to me. I'm like, no, why? Is the old, but that was when pitchers it. had to hit, and so there was like double switches going on, all these crazy moves, and 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 then always yeah. and, and Alex will tell you, Kratz will tell you, back when the pitchers had to hit. You get in late into the game, and the manager would look at like the guy who started yesterday and be like, "Hey, Alex, go get your spikes on. There's a chance." And they they get all heated up, they get all excited, and we're like, "Just kidding, just go sit over 
Well, Alex, how's life right now, man? I mean, actually, first off, just for a moment here, team's playing pretty well. Yeah, we're off to a decent start, man. It's, it's been, been a lot of fun. We had, we had a good we had a good camp. Uh, uh, it's a lot of guys that have, young guys that have been together came up uh, uh, through, through the minors um, and, and been with each other for a lot of years. Uh, and, and it's been a lot of fun. A ton of, ton of energy every day. Uh, and, and we're playing good. We've, we guys have thrown the ball well. Uh, we, we've had, had had a couple guys have some big games at the plate. It, it's been a lot of fun so far. Cots is great. Our staff, and so uh, I'm really enjoying it. Are, are are you and Chicken Strip Ross Stripling? I mean, you guys are like the salty vets now right like you guys are you guys yeah. have 24 other guys under your wings and like all right guys this is how we eat the spread and this is how we go to the bus <laughs> and then, right they're like little ducklings following you guys around <laughs> maybe not to that degree but yeah we're definitely the old guys <laughs> we're, we're definitely the old guys now for for sure um and so it's it's uh it, it's it's been it's been fun you know we've got some talented young arms and um, some guys that are hung, hungry uh you know they're working hard trying to you know solidify themselves as really you know, good pitchers in this league, good hitters in this league, everyday players. And so it's, it's been fun just, uh, you know, chop, chopping it up. And the, the energy has been my favorite part. You know, we, we got an energe energetic bunch. Uh, we do, after, after, after wins in the clubhouse, we, get, we have a little mini basketball goal that's set up right in the center on one of the beams that runs right through the middle of the clubhouse. And, uh, you know, whoever th plays well that, well that day, they, they, put, on, they put on the, the music at, after the game and everybody goes up and circles around them and, and tries to distract them while they try and drain a shot after they win. So it's, it's, it's a, lot, a lot of fun so far and we're, we're playing pretty good. So. Do they get a prize after they win, like a shot of tequila or something? Uh, there have been a lot of shots after every win that have, that have been happening. Team shot, team shots. So uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, that'll, that'll continue. We'll keep winning some good ball games. Who is on the mic? Who's the, we asked, we asked strip earlier when he was on there he was like i'm not sure he goes it's definitely not going to be me so who's on the mic because you got a lot of dudes you got a whole you got a whole list of guys yeah uh paul blackburn has ran the mic so far and he's done he's done a pretty pretty good job uh, i've been fortunate enough to to have a, a few pretty great mic guys throughout my career and, and he's done he's done a pretty good job so far anybody stand out as far as some of the rookies that are like Hey, that's a that's a nice like a nice set of pipes or like he wrote a poem yeah. or something something that's nice. We uh it's been pretty impressive so far to be to be honest. Everybody has totally owned it. They've all they've all gone up there and and, and pretty much nailed, nailed their songs. It, it it was nice uh Kyle Muller took the pressure off a lot of the guys uh literally for, first bus trip uh, uh of the of the season. He he got up there and and I forgot what he what he sang, but he got up there and just broke the ice and and ripped off a, a, a nice song in front of everybody on the bus. And then after that, everybody was had something prepared and was, was ready to roll. So it was, it was it was been pretty good so far. Alex, can you compare last year, especially the end of the season? I, I know that, you know, it was a tough finish for the Giants versus what you have now with, with you and Strip kind of experiencing this ride. Obviously, very different ball club. And I know, you know, we've had Strip on plenty of times on this show. He just said, you know, things weren't right there at the end with San Francisco and they've made a lot of changes on the coaching side too you asked me just to compare the my experience here and, and there so far yeah because obviously yeah, this mean, team is in a different spot but you know san francisco um you know kind of cleared things out a little bit towards the end of last year and it you know it was weird obviously with with what essentially like two starters going and then a lot of mixing and matching which some veterans are like yeah i'd rather just have a little bit more of a plan here yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, they were doing what they thought was best, you know, to to try and get us to the to the po to the postseason. So, at the end of the day, can't, can't, I can't knock them for that. I'm, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I think for any anybody, you know, having having you know so, some semblance of a, of, of a routine, uh, you know, and you know, especially when you've you know been around for a while and had success, you know, just over the course of 162 and making it however many however many starts, you know, thinking that you'll have that the type of success uh, that you that you've had up to that point in your career. So that part was kind of, was kind of tough because you just wanted them to kind of ride ride with you. I think that's how a lot of a lot of people felt. Um, but you know, c coming to coming to Oakland, you know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I really, I honestly did not know until we, we signed Scotty Alexander. They traded for Ross, but before that, I really didn't know any anybody. Which you know, being around for a, for a while, usually you know one or two people on on, on every team, and so. Uh, it, it's it's been really cool coming in, getting to know a lot of a lot, a lot of new guys, guys that, that I've I've seen I've seen play, uh, you know, the last last year the year or two, and it's just a, it's a really great clubhouse. You know, the thing I you know I always loved about my time in San Francisco was 
I just felt like it was a really great group of guys. Like we, there was no, there was no bad eggs. Everybody, you know, worked, worked, worked hard and got, got along. And that's, that's kind of how it, how it is here. You know, literally it just feels like a family, you know, uh, everybody gets along well, guys hang out on the road. We've done some dinners already so, so far. Um, and it's, it's just been good vibes. And so I've, I've really enjoyed my time here so far. Dude, I mean, you live in the same place, so I'm assuming, you know, you just go across the base. So it was probably easy. You just, you know, you just stay in the same house. Like, oh, look, like strip. But, uh, I mean, which is amazing that you can move from one organization to the other and not have to move. But, all right, so let's get into what I really want to talk to you about. You, we had uh, Keith Meister on the other day last week, and he was talking about arm injuries. And you've been very vocal on Twitter about arm injuries. So give us, give us it. Give us your best shot on arm injuries, what you think is causing them mostly and how we can correct them because everyone's asking the same questions and nobody has an idea what to do. I mean, I mean, ultimately I don't think that there is one, one real answer, right. For, for all, for all the injuries that are happening and the things that have been, been going on. I just don't think there's one thing that you can really ultimately point to. Um, and I, I think I, I saw, some, I think, I think Kirsch did, did an interview and said, said something similar. Um, I just don't think there's one cl clear cut answer. I think there's so many different factors. I think ultimately, uh, you know, it seems like we're reaching like an anatomical limit to what we're what what humans and what guys are physically capable, you know, of doing as far as how high the velocity is, is ticking. And I, I don't really think it's stopping. I think I think the I think the average velo and everything is going to continue to to tick up. Maybe the ceiling is getting close to the gap. I mean, hell, I'm seeing Mason, Mason Miller sit 100 to 103 every every single time, every single time out. It's just I mean, it's wild. It's, it's wild. And so uh, it's hard to really f put your finger on some. I, when, when I put out that thread the other day, I, I just was, you know, I had, you see all the guys, that, you know, within 48, 72 hours. I mean, I don't know how, it was like four, four major players, you know, go, going down within, you know, 48 or 70, 72 hours. And, and so just something that a lot of people were overlooking is just how much people were throwing and how often now. And that, that, that was really <clears throat> one of the main points I was trying to bring up was and AJ you probably remember I mean I, like I play with guys that wouldn't throw there were some guys that wouldn't throw bullpens until they got to spring training much less pick up a baseball until you know J Christmas or December 1st and that's how I was you know for the first half of my career you know uh, I mean if, if you if you didn't make the playoffs and you finished October 1st you know you start training pretty quickly at least I, I, I did but I wouldn't touch a baseball until middle of December you know you took some significant time off and now you know, if guys finish the year and they feel pretty solid health health wise, their arm feels good. I mean, maybe they take a week off, two weeks, two weeks off, and they're right back into an on ramp with a plier program or or or, or playing play catch. Uh, and then, you know, by the beginning of, of November, you're starting to get off the mound, maybe even be even before. And so, uh, it, it's just it's just a lot of higher intent throws way more often throughout the course of a year. I mean, you could even call it throwing, throwing your, your rounds. So that, that was really my, my biggest point is, you know, it, Tommy John, as described to me, has always been a, a wear and tear injury, right? So it's, so at least to my knowledge, not often is it an, an acute thing to where you just, you rip one pitch and, all, and a completely healthy tendon just snaps. You, you, you know what I mean? And so when you think about how much more guys are throwing at a higher intent and all of that stuff throughout the course of the year, you know, you're just, you're that limit, however many throws that, that ligament's got, you know, you're just getting closer and closer to it each, each time. So that, that was really my, my biggest thought about it. So are we, are we completely missing the boat as baseball saying, Oh, it's a hundred pitches. He's got to come out of the game, but go throw year round. Could we take one of those? Could throwing year round enable you to throw more than 100 pitches or taking those days off, would that enable you to go 120 pitches? I don't, I don't think it's a qu question of, you know, can guys go 100 to 120 pitches? Is it, will they, will they let you? Like, I don't think from, from any, you know, from a, from a player standpoint, I mean, you guys, you guys, you guys played or around a long, long time, like from a player standpoint, I, I don't know where all of that stuff initially ever came from you know the, the innings limits the pitch the pitch limits the only thing I, that i can conceive is kind of goes along with what i'm saying about you know tommy john and elbow and torso being wear and wear and tear type in, injuries and so they basically put two and two together to where it's like if we limit this amount of throws this should increase long, longevity you know it doesn't seem like that's you know 
panning out the way it probably was originally thought thought about. But it but it is wild. It's like you know, it's like you watch Paul. It's like Paul Skeens, right? I think he's gone. I don't know how many innings he's gone each of his starts, but probably three innings. Each just each of his starts just dominating. You know, through his through his first four Triple A outings. Uh, you know, and I'm assuming they're going to call him up probably probably pretty soon. I mean, the guy, I mean, I mean, the guy's a world world class arm. He's just off to a hot hot start. But it's like you're going three innings in your Triple A start, and then all of a sudden you come to the big leagues, and that, you know, maybe they give you a short a shorter one that's similar to what you've been doing in your first one. But then after that, they're expecting you to eat, right? So it's like to to me, you know, I feel like you have to guys have to have a stronger build in until when they come to the big leagues than what a lot of a lot of, a lot of teams have done. You know, over the last few few years where you know. Uh, three, four, five, like Kyle Harrison last year for the for the for the Giants. I, I feel I feel like he never threw more than five innings in any start his entire year last year. And then when he when he came up, uh, I believe I think his first his very first start he went into the into the seventh inning. And then the guys you know the guys dead, the guys dead in, in in between. So to me, it's like bridging that 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 gap with, with the build up and not being quite as protective of some of the elite arms, you know, in double A AA and triple A before they come to the big leagues and you expect them to, you know, to throw 9,200 pitches, hopefully, and make it through, you know, six, seven uh, innings or whatever it may be. What, what is this? Here's my, here's my question to, to what you're saying. Is this a youth problem because of the pitch limits put on youth baseball? And I get, you know, play other sports. And like you said, I mean, a lot of kids throw year round. And, and I agree with everything you said about like, Pitchers used to go until like January 1st. And, and I remember Mark Burley would barely throw before spring training. And then he'd come in and his first bullpen was off a mound in spring training. And there was a bunch of guys that did things like that, but they could get away with it because they weren't yeah. high velocity guys, right? I mean, now you have guys, the season ends in October, November 15th, they're at driveline throwing max effort, trying to figure out why their slider is not breaking properly. But then, yeah. you, you know, you, you discussed, you discussed uh, guys coming up and you discussed Paul Skeens. Minor leaguers now play one series a week, right? Six game series, one a week. Yeah. Starting pitchers, they pitch once a week in the minor leagues. They're not on the every fifth day. So then they get to the big leagues and they're like, oh shit, I got to pitch every fifth day. I've never done this before. So yeah. is it a youth problem? Is it a minor league problem? Is it a development program? Because I agree, like none of these young kids, they don't throw enough in the minor leagues to know, hey, I know how to get through the third time through of a lineup because they just have never done it. Yeah, uh, you know it's, it's it's a good point. I you know I think it, it goes kind of goes along with everything that you know we've been talking about. I, I think something I saw recently about how much younger and how many more young you know high school type players are having Tommy John surgeries uh, and, and and things things along those lines. And it just go. I, I think a lot of it goes to volume, right? Uh, you know, kind of like we've been, we've been talking about. To where you know guys are playing, you know it's so specialized now. To where guys are committing, you know, at young ages, you know, from middle school through high school, they're playing year round. They're playing fall ball. They're playing in winter tournaments. They're playing high school baseball and, and school ball in the spring. Sometimes even travel ball on top of that, and then summer ball year. I mean, it's, it's a year year round thing. Uh, and so, kind of going hand in hand with the wear and tear aspect of it, you know, the more you're throwing, and plus these guys are, are vulnerable at that at those ages too you know f physically they're they're all hitting big growth spurts when they get to high, high school you know you got you've got growth plates that are, that are soft ligaments that aren't haven't gotten to the point where they're strong enough to be able to handle uh the, uh, the physical capabilities of what some of these high schoolers are able to do because they've been already been in the gym uh, already been throwing plyo, doing plyo programs for for a, for a long time and so yeah i mean uh, a lot of people talk about it. I, I think it's huge to you know either take time off when, when you're when you're that age uh, and play other sp play other sports or at least have some type of real break every every, every year. Um, you know nowadays if you're good if you're good like because a lot of it's about wanting to be seen right like you go to these showcases you go to these tur big tournaments and you want to be seen by scouts so you can get college offers get ready for the draft if you're if you're that caliber player what whatever but you it's so easy to be found now with, with, you know, with, with Twitter, you know, X and all the, all the video apps, all the, all the, all the ways for people to see you play. And so it's not necessary to do so many showcases, so many, so many tournaments as maybe it, it, it was before all of these guys were su super, uh, were able to be super accessible. You know what I mean? And so I, I do think from a youth standpoint, cause I mean, it's being able to take two months off of, of throwing and, and playing, uh, throughout the year instead of going year, year round. 
Um, because if you're getting Tommy John, you know, I, I was one of those guys. I got Tommy John coming out of high school. Uh, I've been fortunate enough that I, that I, uh, my, my ligaments been good, been good since then. I made it, made it this long, but you know, I, I saw, I didn't Meister say five or six years now is what they, what they project, you know, for, for high level, level, level throwers post, post TJ. It, it used to be like at least eight to t- eight to 10 years. And, and now that that timeline just becomes, is becoming shorter and shorter, which is just wild to me. I got laughed out off this show the other day by, by AJ's JV coach. Would it be possible for Alex Wood to come out of high school and get his University of Georgia scholarship and go, hey, you know what, guys? I can throw 97, but I'm going to sit here the whole game and just throw 88 to 91, and when you have one of the good hitters that I'm going to face – bang, I'm going to hit my 97. They're going to still see what you have. Or is that not possible? Yeah, it's, 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 it's super interesting, right? Because off the top of my head, the only two people that I can, I can really think of in any level in my, in my life that I would see like their velo sit lower through the first couple of innings and then have the ability to climb later was Verlander used to do it. Yep. And I feel like I've seen – uh, uh, Max Freed do that. I don't know how much he does that anymore, but like his first few few years in the league, it used to always drive me drive me crazy because obviously he's he's na- he's nasty. But you know, you see him be like one to three, one to four, you know, in the in the first few innings, and I'm like this guy rips ninety sevens. Like what's what's going on? And then all of a sudden, the fourth or fifth inning, you just you see him start breaking off, you know, four, five, six, t- like t- touch touch seven, maybe even sometimes sometimes higher. And I don't know, me personally, I, like you'd have to be pretty world-class arm to be able to, to me, to be able to dial down, still have decent stuff and then pump it up when, when, when you want to. I think it's just a lot easier said than done. And then mm-hmm. at this point now, like the, the, the velocity factor is, is, is so crazy now. Like, I mean, if, if you're, if you're, a, if you're a college arm that's 88 to 90 and you sit there, but all of a sudden you can pop a few i mean may, maybe you get you get looks if guys if scouts and stuff start to know that you've got that ability but i bet as soon as you you know get signed to that team they're like hey we don't want you to stay 80 to 90 anymore we want you to we want you to <laughs> throw, throw every pitch as hard as you can so i mean I, I i don't i don't know you'd have to be really 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 good uh uh in college i think to to be able to have that as a consideration once you got drafted uh to go to play for for, for professional baseball what do you, what about the balls people are talking about the balls kenley jansen said the ball suck p fairbanks said the ball suck people have been complaining about the balls being different since for about 10 years 2016 ish 2017 ish where the ball is flying more have they changed the balls have the balls have anything to do with this then also pitchers not being able to be sticky anymore are also saying this is this is making this worse because you have to grip the ball tighter. You have to squeeze it harder because you can't be as loose because the ball is slicker. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of indifferent on the whole gripping, gripping things tighter and, and, and whatnot, and the effects that that's got on it. I mean, it makes sense theoretically, but I mean, I feel like people like, I, I feel like people have always grip, gripped the shit out of sliders, you know, and, and, and thrown them as hard as they, as hard as they can. Um, you know, it, the balls are definitely are definitely different. I mean, every year they're 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 different. The the biggest thing for me about the balls is like, you know, I, I think I found a ball from like maybe our Braves days, AJ, when I was cl- maybe cleaning some stuff out. Yeah, the balls are so much like to me they're physically smaller now than than, than they used to, they used to be like er, early early in my career, and like, wait, like wait, right wait, now. Ball, what do you mean? The balls are smaller? Like they're like if you took one ball. If you took two different balls and you held them up, one like this would be one, and then the next ball like would be even, physically smaller. So yeah, balls now compared to early in my career, it's night and day. The balls were definitely one hundred percent physically bigger than the, oh, than they bigger, are. Bigger. Oh, they were bigger. Now they're smaller. Now they're smaller, is, and does that mean you, that you, they're wound tighter and they might go farther? They probably they probably go farther. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, obviously, obviously, offense has been a big focus, you know, for the league the last couple of years. Just like it was in the NBA with all, you know, where people don't play defense, they want to see scoring, right? Like it is what it is. Um, but even 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 now, you definitely will get balls that are like bigger and sm- like bigger and smaller uh, during a game currently right right now. And so I like I know when I throw baseballs out, 
uh, when I get a new one, it's usually because it feels like a cue ball in my hand. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't, don't want to throw this ball across, across, across the plate. So I'll try and try and get a, get a new one. Um, and I, I know it's something a lot of guys have talked about is like, like primetime games, you know, you get Sunday night, Sunday night baseball, uh, or like, I don't know what, what nights they do everything now. There's Sunday night, there's Monday night, there's Thursday, like some Saturday, of those primetime games. Saturday nights. Hey, some of us work on Saturday nights calling games. Uh, on <laughs> Barely. It's Barely. on a big network. It has three letters. I think it's – oh, yeah, it's called Fox. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, We also have the All-Star game in the World Series and all the playoffs. I'm just saying, you know, probably, you probably should check, <laughs> check into that. But a lot, a lot of those primetime prime time games, you get you get a lot a lot more of those, those smaller smaller balls. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, or not but, it is, but it is interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Ne- okay, so next time I do a game, I'm going to make sure I get a ball from the game, and I'm going to take it – I'm going to get a ball from when I played for the Giants in 2004, and I'm going to be like – Hmm. I guarantee you, if you go, if you go, <laughs> if you go into your, if you go into that that trophy room of yours and you grab a ball from from back in back in the day, they will feel significantly different, like significant. Okay, I, I mean, I believe you. I totally believe you. And I mean, are you saying they're playing with home run derby balls? No, nah, I'm not. I'm not saying those home run derby balls are crazy. <laughs> <They're> not, <laughs> <laughs> those, I, 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 I still, I still uh, remember 2017 Miami. Uh, when I made the All-Star game, and Aaron Judge is in the Home Run Derby, dude, I was seeing him hitting hitting those Home Run Derby balls off of the top of the glass in left center, beyond the uh, beyond the the seats uh, at Marlins Park. Like I've never seen a ball hit like that in my freaking life. He was like going, he would hit, he was hitting balls in the Home Run Derby, Apo Taco upper deck, like crazy. Yeah, the, he hit the roof. He hit the roof that NASA said. <laughs> Nobody could physically hit the roof, but they weren't testing. They weren't testing the home run derby golf balls. I mean, baseballs <laughs> that they were using. Hey, did you see? Did you see the start that Max Myers had this year? Pitcher from the Marlins. He's been. He's had three starts. He's got like a two one one ERA. He's clearly their best. Their best pitcher right now. He's coming yeah, off I, the top of the Yeah, I know he is. I haven't seen. I haven't seen him throw though this year. He just got sent down to AAA to limit his innings. Do you think a team is – how do you feel about that? And do you think a team is over-manipulating that kind of thing? Because they did the same thing last year as a playoff team with Yuri Perez, who then this year got Tommy John surgery. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really like, like that. I mean, I, to me, if, if he's one of your dudes, you, you, you ride him and you, fi- you figure it out at a, at a later date. Unless you know, I think every organization is is different. Like you look at the like you look at the Dodgers. You know, if you know they, they like like they know they're going to be in the playoffs, right? And so how you manage someone's innings throughout the year probably is a little bit easier when you know pretty much know where you're going to be at the at the end of the season. Like I, I you probably can't say you know where the Marlins are going to be at the at, at the end of the year, right? Like you know, I think they have a solid squad, but I, I think they've gotten off to 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 a poor start. So like you really just don't know what's going to happen. So that's one of your dudes. Like I, I don't see how. You you send him back down and don't keep him in your rotation, because uh, what's the point of an uh, you know what's the point of an innings limit if you know you're not going to be playing in in October, right? You know. Yeah, and it's Agreed. April. It's and April. Agree. And like, he it's had one two, thing if and it's around the All Star three wins for the Marlins too. Let's not forget. Yeah, but 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 it's <laughs> April. Like if you're trying to limit innings, yeah, at the end of the year, even if it's something mid season, you you let him make three starts and then you send him down. Like there's no yeah. way that he was told that was the plan. That makes no sense. How, well, how would you now take too, that? Because it's interesting now too, just with like the the new rules, you know, where it's like it, to a degree it has incentivized teams to just bring bring up their their really good players, right? Because it's uh, you know because it can help help the team, and, and obviously I don't know what what is the what is the cutoff for getting a, like a full year of service and, and, and all of that now. One seventy two. One seventy two. So a few like, weeks in. You're saying you can get the PPI, the the extra draft yeah. pick if the guy finishes, you know, top, top yeah. of rookie of the year voting. So but that's like my example, rookie of the year. He's not a rookie of the year, right? And and for example, like the the case you can make is like Jackson Holiday got optioned after the spring training that he had, but then gets called up, still eligible for you know winning rookie of the year and the Orioles getting that extra pick. It was like right before that deadline. You know, yeah. th- this case is is the other way where it's like, all right, you have a dude who shoved for three starts. He's pretty young. Yes, you're not going to have him go 175 innings this year, but it's April. Like it, it's it's weird. And I, I feel and I'm like not sure. what, what's his, got, what's his history? What, what's his history innings innings wise? What did, what did he do last year? 
Well, he had Tommy John. He was he, coming he's, off Tommy he's John. been hurt a lot, Got but it. still, I mean, the, it, it's, it just doesn't make sense to do this now, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know enough about it to really speak on it. I just know it's 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 weird timing if he's been pitching as well as everyone says he's been pitching. And if he's your if he's your guy, there's ways to take care of him too. If you, you know you don't have to you don't have to send him back if he's dealing for you and he's coming off Tommy John, you know, put him on the aisle with fatigue, you know, you know, and let yep. let him take take a day blow and then bring him bring him back or whatever you want to do. Yeah, hey, I, hey, I agree. Woody, what what's it been like? Um, I know you, you know. You go from L.A., you go from San Francisco, now you're in Oakland. And, listen, the crowds in Oakland aren't the greatest. I mean, it's got to be a little bit strange, right? I mean, because you were in L.A. and San Francisco, two of the hotbeds of crowds coming to the game. They're intense and everything. And then you go to Oakland, you're like, uh, okay, this is a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, you know, with, with the <laughs> amount of people. I mean, going going to anywhere after after L.A., you know, with, with, with the crowds they got in, in San Francisco – you know, w- would be different, but obviously c- coming to Oakland, you know, all the, all the drama with, you know, where, the, where are they going to play? Are they going to Vegas? Where are they going to be next year? Leaving Oakland, uh, you know, all kind of all the protesting that a lot of the, you know, the, the OG diehard fans uh, for, for the, for the A's ha- have been doing. Uh, I think there was, I mean, there's probably, we had, we had a decent crowd on opening day, but I think there was, I mean, there was thousands of people out, outside of the stadium, you know, tailgating, watching the game from outside pro- pro- protesting. Um, the, the way I would describe it, uh, I would say it kind of like our group of guys, like it's a bunch of young guys. We're having a lot of fun. A lot of the vibes are good. Energy is good. It kind of feels like, you know, the focus is more on, on, on just us. You know, it's kind of like we're having our own, our own little, little party uh, uh, to, to, to a degree. And so, you know, I haven't – I honestly haven't like sat there and been like, damn, this is, this is tough with, with not having, you know, this, this many fans because of the energy that, you know, I feel like we've, we've had a lot of guys bring on a, on a daily basis – um and, and and aj you got and Cassie, you, you guys can attest to this like you know when you're with you know like on you have teammates that you know are hungry you know that they like they're they're young they really they really want it you know and, and they're trying to go get it uh we have a lot of those guys and so it's been really fun for me to see that on a daily basis uh and the energy they're bringing from that standpoint uh i've really really enjoyed it yeah, you enjoy Mason that. Miller throwing 107. That's what you enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, AJ, he's oh, he's gross, dude. He he. It, my my comp for him is he's prime Craig with 103. Can he step over the top ring wow. in a WWF match? Those legs are huge. <laughs> it looks he looks he like an ass, he looks like a giraffe. But uh, but his his slide. I mean, you talk about everyone talks about his heater. His slider. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's it's every bit as good as his heater. His slider is gross. All right, Alex, appreciate you coming on. Every time we have a pitcher on, though, what? By, by the way, I'm mad at him because I've been trying to get him on for a year. Now all of a sudden, he just randomly, I'm like, oh, random Taco Tuesday comes on. I'm like, oh, I'm here. <laughs> After I've been texting this dude for a year, and he's great. A year. Whatever. Hey, we did, we did it, Age. We did, we did it. Uh, we did it. We did it. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you coming on, but you know, do you know do you know how what AJ's career average against you was? Oh, I know that, I got I a couple. Make... I got a hit. I know I got at least one hit. Up to, one, for it, one. Uh, one, one for one. One for one. Line drive up the middle. No, I don't know. I don't know. Let's stop talking about AJ. Do you remember the one at bat that I got against you? Oh gosh! Uh, was it in, was it in Milwaukee? In Milwaukee, game six, we're winning like six to one, seven to two, something like that. You're in the game, and you did this right I in the back you. leg. Oh, I just... Hey, two strikes though, wasn't it? Two strike slider. Thank God, I would not have hit it. Yeah, if you had thrown it I remember the plate, it now. I would not have hit it. Damn, right they got the back it, leg. That <laughs> it was. This was. This Damn. was two weeks after the game. Shut up, for real. I had to go see somebody for this thing. That's crazy. Was Still, it, looks like your back surgery. leg or your front leg? That's my back leg. That's a back leg slider. All right. At least, at least I got it to the back leg. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Woody, you don't even throw hard. What is Crouch made out of? Yogurt. Must have clipped. Must have clipped him pretty good. I must have been hey. on some good pills to make me bruise like that. Damn. Hey, you. Hey, you. You know the clip y'all need to go see from from our our game last night. Uh, damn, who got, uh, Michael, I think it was Michael K- Kelly, uh, reliever for us, c- came in, left-handed batter for the cards. Dude, slider, 
right off the top, right off the top, like top of his knee, like on his front leg, dude, the ball, like 75 feet in the air, like literally cl- clipped him so flush. The, you can see the ball on the replay and the ball shoots over towards our dugout on the third baseline, like literally 75 feet in the air. It was nuts. Okay. <laughs> Oof. Ooh, that sucks. But yeah. two things, Woody, before, before we let you go, did yeah. you see when the dude swung this year and the ball hit him in the face? That was amazing. Who was that? The uh, lefty? Was that Tyler Rogers? It was Tyler Rogers threw him a slider up and in, and he took a full hack, and it hit his oh, shoulder, man. and it hit him in the helmet, knocked his I helmet thought. off. That was, that was that's, tough, but that's a tough, that's a tough AB for a lefty, man. Oh, uh, and then, and then, what, how much did y'all pay the uh, replay guy last night to get in uh, Ollie Marmel's way, the security guard? When they're trying to get a replay, and he's just like, "Oh my bad, I just happened to be in the way, right?" When you need to look hey, at the dugout phone, he wouldn't. It, it, it wouldn't have mattered. We, we were we were hawking that clock, man. It, it hit zero before he bumped into the into the security guy, so they wouldn't have gotten <laughs> off anyway. Oh man. Well, Alex, it was awesome having Ooh. you on. Actually, you know, a lot of those Ace fans you're talking about, they're always in our chat. They said they're going to have a player appreciation game. So you're going to have a you're going to have a packed house there at some point because that whole group is is very united. So we'll look forward to that. We'll get that some good coverage. But Dude, that hair on. is on point. It Scott is, is jealous oh, of the height, bro. Strong. He is <laughs> jealous of the height, bro. Like Real it. strong. <laughs> I like it. Thank you, Alex. Good to talk to you, man. Keep crushing it. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. You too. Alex Wood, Oakland A's, joining us. Great on Twitter. Give him a follow. As he mentioned, he has that whole thread that he laid out there about pitching injuries right now, and we got into it pretty good there, and he had some great answers. There, there are a lot of different point. opinions. Yeah. He was on point, though, with a lot of what he said, and I agree with it. Like, not, I mean, it's hard to agree because there are so many reasons for whatever is happening is happening, but I agree with what he said. I mean, guys used to take months off. I mean, I remember at the end of my career for like the last like 10 years, I didn't touch a bat until the first day of spring training. Because I was like, man, if I start hitting in January, by the time February 15th rolls around, I'm tired of hitting. And you're just, you know, you pick up a bat in spring training, you're like, oh, man, this is kind of cool. I do this for a living. Guys feel (laughs) pressured that they can't do that. I I understand. But if once you become a veteran guy and you're established, you could probably do it Mm -hmm. and get away. Now, I, I mean, I would start throwing around January 1st just to get my arm in shape. But I would give it from our, our three months off from doing anything. And listen, the first time you pick up a ball, you're like, gosh, I'm never going to be able to throw again because everything goes, <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes you throw a ball and your fingers would go numb because you're like, man, I just haven't done this because all of it's breaking up. But I don't know. I mean, I wasn't a pitcher. but I That's mean, the difference, too. I, is... I understand that. But still, as a pitcher, you can lightly toss to keep things going. right? You don't have to be out there and going to drive. I mean, listen, driveline does a lot of great stuff. But you don't need in, in the middle of November after pitching for eight months be like, oh, man, I'm going to tune it up in November. Can we wait and push it back or do it, you know, literally the season ends, boom, the next day and then shut it down? Yeah, also weighted balls. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. They're, that works so well, but it also – there's no way that that doesn't just destroy your arm. <laughs> there there was a guy I was listening to the other day who's, who's part of the group with Dr. James Andrews who said, like, they already have research that it, like, stretches out something. I'm not going to try and quote him, but it didn't sound good. Anyway, let's get to our FT Senior Insider right now. Ken Rosenthal swinging by, joining us on FT. Ken, I don't know if, I'm sure you caught at least a little bit of that conversation. The part I wanted to bring right up to you is the fact that the Marlins now fall to 4-13. and And it's one thing to be bad. It's another to option one of your best pitchers. So I'm curious about your take on the Marlins and what you saw from Max Meyer, because I'm sorry, optioning a guy after three starts to save innings makes no sense. Well, I wrote about this today and it was indeed a curious move. No one would dispute that. And I talked to the general manager, Peter Bendix, and he explained what they were doing and why they were doing it. Now, the first thing to remember is Max Meyer, this is his first season since a Tommy John surgery in August, 2022. So he was never going to spend the entire season in the majors. He was never going to get past a certain innings level. We don't know what that level is. The Marlins don't even know what it is, but he was going to be handled with care. The other thing that Bendix noted was that, and this will shock you and you might laugh at it, but the Marlins currently believe they have six healthy starting pitchers with Meyer, if you include him, seven once Braxton Garrett returns, and he's close. He's experiencing a bit of a dead arm in his rehab, but they felt they had to do something, that something had to give. And that was the reason, ultimately, they had to make a choice here. Now, the part I question in my article 
is why this guy, he's got two of your three wins. His last start, he beat the Braves, and you're sending him out? You could easily put A.J. Puck back in the bullpen. He hasn't really succeeded as a starter and demote one of your relievers. It's not like your bullpen's so great. Or you could take Ryan Weathers, who admittedly has pitched well, but has an option left, and you could send him to the minors. The problem I had with this was the timing. If you want to do this at some point, understood. He has to save innings, and he has to be handled with care. He's a young guy, and coming off the Tommy John, we all understand that. But why do it now when you have a team in a state of urgency, needing every win it can get? He is your stopper, and you're telling him goodbye? That part of it made no sense. Everything else I understood. I just thought they had other choices that they could have made. When you talked to Peter, did he say, like, he knew this could be something that's coming down the road? Like, did did they give Max the lay out the plan for this? Skip Schumacher told reporters yesterday that they had told Max Meyer when he made the team. And remember, he only made the team because of injuries to Edward Cabrera and Yuri Perez and Braxton Garrett. So they told him at that point, listen, this is not going to be all year. You have to understand that. And I'm sure he does understand that. He understands where he is in his career and with the post-surgery recovery program. But at the same time, when you tell a kid, I don't care who he is and I don't care where he's playing, that, yeah, you had this amazing success, the Braves, you shut them down, even though they're maybe the most powerful lineup in the game, but we're going to send you out now. We're not going to wait any longer. That is where perhaps the disconnect comes in. And we haven't heard from Max Meyer on it. I don't expect him to be anything but diplomatic. But my gosh, he had to be disappointed. One more on this. Can I, Travis Sochik brought up the service time. He was like, Max Meyer stands at one year, 82 days, 172 days required for a full year of service. Super two, five-year average around two years, 125 days. So I think we can begin to map out development timelines for Max Meyer. He wasn't getting I'm sorry, to this... two years. He wasn't getting to two years, 125. If he had a sure. full year this year, he was getting okay. to two years, 82. That's short of super two. So this wasn't a case of service time manipulation with regard to the super two. It could conceivably be a case down the line of service time manipulation if he doesn't get back to the majors and be in the majors. I think it's about half the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they can manipulate it that way, save themselves a year of control. But I don't expect them to do that. I don't know that this was about service time as much as it was about the decision to preserve innings and where they are as a staff. Ultimately, if he's down for most of the year, then, yeah, you can make the case it's a service time thing. And let's face it, if you're the Marlins and you're out of it, you might say, hmm, maybe we should keep him down the rest of the year. That's a different story. And if that happens, then we have a service time question. But at this point in time, there is not that situation. Man, Ken, you just make baseball come alive. Uh... <laughs> you guys are hot from the weekend, we know. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> well, All right. This, this is the star of Fox Saturday. I don't uh, know if you uh, heard no, it. No inning. doubt. No, every inning. I can add, he could add. He added every inning, trust me. Uh, <laughs> Tommy Pham signed with the White Sox, and you were kind of you you kind of hinted at this to me, and I kept my mouth shut this weekend. We were driving to the airport. Uh, what does it bring to the White Sox, and why 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 did it take so long? And I mean, is this the only offer Tommy Pham had? Because why? I mean, they're two and fourteen. Why would Tommy Pham, other than playing time, and I guess is the main thing for him, but why would he want to join them if he had other offers from other teams? He had offers earlier, but he didn't like those offers. And what happened was Tommy Pham viewed himself coming off the season he had last year, where I believe it was 1.9 F4, which is a pretty good season. He believed that he was worth a certain amount of money. He had a better season than some free agents who signed for a lot more. And it was difficult for him. He's a prideful guy. It was difficult for him to come to the realization that it wasn't happening. And my opinion on why it wasn't happening was more because of his age, which is 36, than anything that might have happened off the field in the past. I wrote a story with Will Salmon of The Athletic last year about how Tommy Pham actually is quite a popular teammate, how guys really like him. We quoted Francisco Lindor, others with the Mets at that time, others with the Diamondbacks. So 
I don't know that it's that. I know that's the knee-jerk reaction. Your dummy fam's this. No, he's not all that. But he had expectations. And when those expectations weren't met, he had a hard time accepting that. And I can understand that. At the same time, at some point, reality sets in and you have to accept the kind of offer that you weren't accepting earlier. And that's where he is. And yes, the White Sox with their injuries will give him a chance to play. He gets a $500,000 bonus if he's traded. I'm sure that's part of the thinking here. And let's face it, guys. This player last year helped the Diamondbacks get to the World Series and was pretty darn good in the World Series. So he is a guy that still has some baseball left in him, I believe. And he, I'm sure, is quite eager to show that with the White Sox. By the way, I played with Tommy Pham. He was awesome. I mean, he was super young when he came up, but I, I still, to this day, I mean, I think he was, he's pretty awesome at what he does. I mean, you're right. He, he has his thoughts and he has his things and he has, we all have our quirks, but he sticks by it. He works his ass off. And he's a hell of a player, and, and, he's, he, and he can change. I think if you listen to some guys last year, he changed the mentality of teams with the way he approached every at-bat. He did. And, I mean, you know, you saw what the Mets said about him. He changed a lot of their work ethic. He's like, we thought we were working hard until we saw what Tommy Pham did, and, whoa, we changed our complete game round. Exactly, AJ. And, and that's really important to remember. And that's why we wrote that story last year, because I'll tell you how it came about, too. It, this is interesting. So one day I'm at City Field, and – they had just traded Tommy Pham, the Mets had. And Eric Hinsky, their assistant hitting coach, we were just talking. And he goes, man, that guy, that guy was awesome. I'm like, really? He goes, yes, ask Lindor about him. So I went to Lindor and said, hey, what about him? And AJ, he said exactly what you just described, that he made Lindor work harder. He showed Lindor how to work in some respects and other Mets as well. So this notion that he's a bad guy, all players should be such bad guys. Yeah, he is awesome. I would ditto. I would agree with everything that AJ said and everything that you wrote. Has Jack Leiter worked on everything that the org wants him to work on? The reason he hasn't gotten called up before this is because, you know, his, his issues with finding the strike zone consistently. Has he worked on all those things or is it just a... We got a lot of dudes on the IL right now. We need you. Well, it's always a little bit of both, right, Eric? But he has worked on some mechanical things. They really redid him last year. And then he came back to camp this year. They had to kind of tweak it again. But he is a kid that has worked on some things that, in theory, should improve his control. And I haven't really studied his minor league numbers in great depth, but... They would not be recalling him if they did not believe he was ready. Chris Young is their GM. He's a former pitcher himself. He is quite a good GM. He won the World Series last year, but if there's any one area in which he has more expertise, it would be on the pitching end of it. So they're excited about this, I'm sure, and they feel he is ready. Uh -oh. I don't know who that is. I don't know maybe either. That's, maybe that's one of AJ's friends calling him. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> I don't have any friends, though, so who would be calling him? Oh, stop. This this is He's a, about to this go to a, a golf tournament. That, I'm <laughs> yeah. excited to watch him pitch Thursday against the Tigers. It's going to be cool. I like it. Um, last one for me. Uh, so I listen to Fair Territory, of course. It's up there now if anyone wants to grab it. And it's pretty evergreen this week, so it's not like anything on there you know, is dated at the moment. The part that stood out that I'd like to go back and forth on for a moment is Angel Hernandez. So I know you addressed it. My... We took 10 minutes on this yesterday. My thought is, what is the line for a league or a person of authority to have to intervene? Kratz mentioned how it wasn't just missing calls. It was the worst missed call on the width of the strike zone, and it was clearly off. To me, it felt intentional because you you literally have to turn your head this way to look at how far wide that pitch was, and everyone knew what was going on. So I'm wondering, like, does he have to go a whole inning where he calls every ball a strike and every strike a ball and then someone says something? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is the line when suddenly, finally, someone will step in? Because the league has plenty of authority on many other fronts. They can't even comment on it. It's that, like, ooh, we can't touch this? Scott, it's an excellent question. And I don't know the answer to that. And that's something really we should pose to the league if they'd ever come on here, which I don't imagine they would. But 
there has to be a line, right? There has to be a line where you tell the umpires union, enough is enough. We cannot stand this anymore. Now, if you remember, Angel Hernandez sued Major League Baseball. He wanted better postseason assignments. And it came out during that prece proceeding that they really don't like Angel Hernandez very much. They didn't think of him very highly as an umpire. And yet, nothing has happened. I will say one interesting thing, guys. One thing that I learned in the last couple of days. I texted an umpire and said to him, hey, I basically said, Scott, where is your line? Why aren't you guys embarrassed by this? And I know to a certain degree, umpires are going to close ranks, but I thought this was so exceptional and not in a good way, but so out there that maybe I would get a reaction because let's face it, if it was somebody in my profession that I thought was that incompetent, at least at periods of time, I'd have a problem with it. This umpire did not go there. He said, frankly, we all make mistakes. The scrutiny on Angel is too much. Now, he didn't excuse Friday. He agreed that it was not good at all, what happened in that at bat with Wyatt Langford. But he said, and this surprised me, the umpires love Angel Hernandez. They think he is just a quality human being, a great guy. I don't want people hanging up and turning off their computers right now while watching. <laughs> but this is, this is how they feel about him. And Ted Barrett, retired umpire, posted something on Instagram the other day. You can go look at it. And his words of praise for Angel, this was before the Friday night fiasco. I was kind of stunned. And I was kind of stunned to hear from the other umpires. So... It's not like they're down on him. They think he does take his job seriously. They think that there's unfair scrutiny on him as opposed to others because he's such a walking meme, so to speak. Now, I would disagree. I would think there's enough evidence here. We've all seen it over the years to think that Angel Hernandez probably doesn't belong in this group anymore. But again, that was the reaction I got, and I was surprised to get it. Uh, I mean, Ken, listen, when, when another umpire misses a call by seven inches off the plate, then we'll stop talking about Angel Hernandez and we'll say, man, all the umpires are in this together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I liked Angel as a guy too. Don't get me wrong. Like Kratz and I had this conversation, we had this conversation, was it yesterday? Mm -hmm. And we talked about it. Like Angel, when you see him as the nicest guy, hey, brother, how are you? You know, d the nicest guy in the world. And then he messes up and you're like, Angel. Like, we kind of miss that one. He's like, yeah, I know, but eh, it's okay. It's only one strike out of three. And you're like, no, dude, like, that's still it's my at-bat. you my life. You know, this is my at-bat you're taking out of my hands. And and so, I, I mean, listen, I agree. Angel's a nice guy. And I've talked to Angel off the field now, especially doing our job. You run into the umpires. Nice conversations with them. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm judged it's on my performance. performance. It's it is. I'm judging on my okay. performance. He should be judged on his, and all these guys should be. And, and I totally agree, AJ. I'm not I don't know. trying to excuse anything, okay? I'm just saying the reaction I got was not the reaction I expected when I contacted that particular umpire, who, by the way, did not want to go on the record because he knows any umpire who goes on the record defending Angel <laughs> Hernandez is going to be getting the scarlet letter as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I understood it. I, I understood the whole thing. And no, I'm with you 100% that hey, it's about performance, especially at the highest level of the sport. And he's been a below average performer for too long. Was his name Joe West, the umpire? <laughs> his name was not. <laughs> not I will not play any, meeny, miny, yeah, moe with you, no. but his name is not Joe West. But in, in fairness, you're not going to get an owner to really speak about the A situation know, either. Know. You know, John Fisher is embarrassing to the sport. No one talks about it in that group. His, his, his peers don't talk about it publicly mm -hmm. for a reason. It's, it's a zero-sum game, so... Oh, well, thanks, Ken. We're, we're trying to solve problems here. I don't know if we did, but we'll, we'll keep trying. So we'll catch you on well, Fair AJ, Thursday. AJ <laughs> tried to solve a problem Saturday because he believed apparently that a kid broadcasting his first major league game, I shouldn't even call him a kid. Connor Onion is no kid. He's a pro. AJ basically accused him of not being able to read in his first major league broadcast. That is not what happened. That is <laughs> that not. Is You're such a bully. Goal. That is not at all what was said. Now, I did accuse him of not eating the ballpark food because Houston hooked us up with all <laughs> kinds of food. I mean, they hooked us up with, like, so much food. AJ I had, like, three courses. That. Dude, I had a whole meal. during. The head. They gave us this hot dog thing. It was four hot dogs in one bun. So good. And then they gave us this cold pork thingy. That was so He's good. He's probably nervous. He's going to have like a stomach problem during his oh, first dude. broadcast. Oh, dude. he brought us these, these nacho thingies that were so good. Oh, man. I, so I good. didn't eat. He wouldn't even touch it. 
I like, was the same way. So let me let me before Ken gets off and runs away like he did on Friday when I wasn't on. Okay. <laughs> so he said something about someone was Voldemort from Harry Potter. That's right. And, and I, I don't know who I forget who he was talking about. Oh, he's talking about Adolis Garcia. He's Voldemort right. from Harry Potter. And, Houston. and he looks at me and goes, Houston. "Have you ever seen the Harry Potter movies?" And I said, "No, Connor. Unlike you, I read the books." Not taking a shot at him not being able to read. It was more of he watched the movie because he's of the movie generation. I was of the book generation. How did and you know he did not read the books? Because I know he didn't because he's a movie generation kid, and I was right. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Scott, at one point, I'll, I'll let you guys go. I know you don't want to hear this. But at one point, I had to jump on and correct the record and say that Connor Onion does indeed know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> how do you know that for sure? Did you see him yeah. reading books? Have you seen him I'm read? I'm pretty confident on that one, AJ. I'm pretty confident. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they did ask me, and, and, and someone said something about me, and I said, well, I've never read a Ken Rosenthal article in my life, so maybe I can. <laughs> that, that did go out on the airwaves, yes. <laughs> yes. A AJ's only in it for the Harry Potter books. That's right. They were great back That's in the day. That's good. Well, I, I can't wait for chapter two whenever that is. We are all anxiously awaiting the, <laughs> the, the, the reconvening of Ken and, and hey, thank AJ you, Ken, for Connor. the ride to the airport, and thank you because otherwise I wouldn't have made it. Well, we, we had an issue there, but yeah, we got yes. <laughs> We heard all about that, too. So <laughs> nothing gets held back on this show. It's two hours every day. Ken, thank you. We'll see you on Fair Thanks, Territory guys. on Thursday. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, fair territory out there for the world to consume as well. The one from Monday actually gets into you know, more of the Ipe scandal uh, with Otani and, and does a checkup on the Braves pitching, Brewers pitching, a little bit of Astros pitching and that conversation too. So check that out when you get a chance. Let's do some digging. We haven't been in the weeds in a while. Did you guys see this story about the Bad Bunny Agency, it's about a year old, it's called Remos, and they're facing MLBPA punishment. The story came out on Friday after our show. Uh, Britt Early did a great job with it, breaking the story, and we just didn't have time yesterday. We were busy as hell. At least one license has been revoked, and it looks like it's from their main agent. They, they have two agents. It's a new agency. It's, it's a year old. Uh, the name's William Arroyo, and... Apparently, there were other agencies that were reporting them basically since they fired up about a year ago. And uh, their biggest client is probably Francisco Alvarez. Ezekiel Tovar is their richest client. You, you know, he signed that extension right around when the season started. They've got one of the Dodgers' best prospects, Diego Cartaya. But from the article, some of the complaints from other agents involved multiple employees who were not certified agents but acting in that capacity. Multiple accounts from players and agents involve employees of Remos offering large sums of money, cars, and other incentives that are prohibited in the MLBPA's agent regulations to get players to switch agencies. It is believed that Remos has two certified agents, sources say, and other employees who were seeking to obtain agent status are now expected to be denied. Players affected by the news were informed by the PA. And the statement from Remus essentially said nothing. I mean, they said, at Remus, we uphold the highest standards of professionalism and integrity of our industry. Out of respect for an ongoing process within the co context of the MLBPA agent regulations, we'll refrain from making any comments at this time. We remain committed to continuing uh, to serve our clients with excellence. Real quick, first off, because I think there's a lot here. If you're putting out a statement, wouldn't you say this ain't true if it wasn't true? Because that, that's what I was looking for. That's the first place to go. We, we, we're trying to be the utmost blah, 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 blah. You say it's not true if it's not true. So, so the story's true. Great job reporting by Britt Giroli. We, we know that's true. Um, I actually was told about this one six months ago. There were people freaking out about it. They're like, yo, they're just dumping tons of money and cars and all this shit on players. I don't know how all this shit works. So this player's posted show. Help us out here. I know this stuff's happened in the past. Does it happen th like in this egregious of a way in 2024 where, you know, someone gets picked off from an agency because they're just dumping like hundreds of thousands of dollars of cash and cars and luxury items on a player to get them to leave? I don't think anybody's dumping any money on me to leave <laughs> BP, BPA and 
Storm Kirschenbaum, who did an incredible job as an agent pretty much my entire career. But yeah, I mean, agency, they don't lure guys over because they're like, hey, I'll make you a better player. They lure guys over by doing a little bit of the shady stuff. Yeah, and selling them for what they have, but they're selling them with early. I can I can attest to like guys in triple A, guys in double A who are switching agents. Like it's the reason you're not you're in double A AA or triple A isn't because of your agent. It's because you're not good enough yet. And when an agent comes to you and says, I'll get you custom cleats, I'll get you, I'll get you, you know, tickets to a football game this year. Guys are like, whoa, for real? Yeah, we have all those connections. Come on over. That's not helping your baseball career. That is just helping them once you make it. The reason they're coming after you is because you are going to make the big leagues and make a lot of money and they want to have you in their agency. Okay. But you can't do that. No. I was never offered anything, but people also knew I wasn't going to switch. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I, I mean, I, I never really even heard stories about anybody being offered any other, any other thing, any other things than what Kratz just said, like, oh, I can get you custom cleats and I can get you this and I can get you that. But I never heard anybody being offered cars and money and all the stuff that like was in this article. It's, I mean, I guess if you want to make a splash, you do it, but then you lose your license. Well, then you can't do it. They don't even yeah. have a license, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> It was, this is one of those stories and I'm curious, like tell us in the chat for the, the group that's in here right now, D does this stuff interest you? You know, do you want to hear about this when a story like this comes out? Cause there's some in the industry are like, eh, this is too like inside industry stuff. I'm like, Fat Bunny is a top three music artist on the planet. It's a, it's a big name. It's not Tyler Swift, but he might be number two or three or something like that he's on the power time. rankings. He is big. He's big time. Plus he's he's pretty in, involved plus in our he's game been in too. The wrestling ring too he's been in the celebrity incredible. softball game. Yeah. He, he's an entertaining, super talented dude. Obviously, he's not single handedly doing much on this front. You know, the name's on it. It's it's his team behind the scenes. I think he, obviously he's got a music agency. Music agency world, baseball agency world, not the same. Yeah, but don't but, we need this? Don't we need this in baseball in some capacity? Not the illegal part of it, but yep. the popularity part of it. Just that Bad Bunny is he, – he's a huge baseball fan. Now, I get it. He's not the one going out and, you know, making these offers. He's not maybe necessarily behind it. They mentioned a couple of the agents that are going to lose their license. But don't we need this? Don't we need that, like – cross platform a little bit is that am i using the right words when i say cross platform uh no i think i think that makes yeah. sense because the the part that's actually good in this story like the part that you want to look at that you're referring to is i think they took some of the guys to like a big music award show you know they were th those kind of perks that i think you can do where they're like hey let's try and get you involved in the music scene a little bit let's let's get you some you know some appearances here that you wouldn't usually get from another place that stuff I like, and other agencies do that now anyway. You know, there are other agencies that have connections or you know, have people working in other departments that can cross promote, get them marketing deals. Like that stuff's all clean and nice. You just, you can't dump money in cars and all this stuff. It also starts to become a slippery slope because where the problem is for a union is that if they feel like this group is, is not being ethical, what's to stop them from getting all of their dudes deals that are under market value because they get them signed up early and they also need to make a return on their investment. Like, let's say they spent $10 million on handing shit out to players and they have 10 players. They're going to be like, well, we got to get a couple guys signed up early to one of those, you know, cheaper extensions, regardless of what is in the player's best interest. You, you start to lose trust as a group. What are, are we still talking about the MLB here with all these like gifts and everything to lure people over? Or are we talking about NCAA? Are we talking about college athletes now? No, it's all of those things apply here. Or are we talking about the, the what is it, opening day after the lockout from MLB and they all had some type of headphones or something in their lockers being like, sorry for locking you out and talking shit, but friends? Yeah, it's, it's a, gift. a gift. I get it. 
If somebody wants to lure me over right now, I'll take a new car. I'm just saying. Okay. So right. I, just, I, thought it, I thought it was an interesting story. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it. I mean, we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah. Yes. Who are their clients? That's what I want to know. I told you some, Ezekiel Tovar. So yeah. that was why I mentioned the extensions. On the other side, though, you know, we, we talked about this, and Tovar's off to a nice start, and he's a sick glove. I thought that was a nice extension for him. We, we talked about it. Great. You know, the, the, the bat metrics, not sure long term. So he, he, he locked in his long term richness. I, mm -hmm. I was fine with that. Francisco Alvarez is their big boy right now. I, I mean, he has potential to make a lot of money. True. He's a catcher that can swing it. If I sign with them, I hope they put me on a rap album. Bad Bunny and Eric Kratz. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they and that's why they're not recruiting that. you. Yeah. Dang yeah, they they can call me Oso that. Blanco. Hey, I I'm... thought that was uh, Evan Gaddis. Okay. Mono? Mono Blanco? White Monkey? I don't know. Something. On the, on the positive side of things, Estuary Ruiz is back up in the bigs. And went Ooh, deep last he night. He did off the bench. Fans were freaking out, you see and that rightfully bomb he so. Last night? That, that was, was a freaking off. in Oakland mm, at night. At night in Ooh. Oakland. I mean, clearly the dude was pissed about swing. the whole situation. What? This doesn't happen in the past. You you get you start off the season. You you play well, and then you get sent down. This did not happen when I was growing up. It did not. You can't do that even from the PR optics. I feel like. Front offices nowadays are like, we stick to our process. We said three stars for Max Meyer. We said Estuary Ruiz is not getting on base enough. Don't let that 429 in five seconds fool us. Like, can you at least let the guy go through an 0 for 10 and then send him down? You know, it just, it doesn't look good. Jordan Walker, his launch Jordan angle Walker. wasn't good. So they sent him down hitting 278. Good Lord. I never hit 278 for like two games. And they sent me down. Like, they, it shouldn't. Now, credit to Oakland, and I know this is rarely said on foul territory, he did get called up before the, I think he still had four days left. So he got called up before that. So credit to the fans for the outcry that this guy needed to be called up because he slid in under the, under the deadline. Now, are they going to send him down again? This I don't know. I um, yeah, I mean, listen, this dude was was really good for him last year. I had a ton of stolen bases for him. Was off to a great start. I know they wanted to make decisions. Then he went down to AAA and was just banging down there. And then he <laughs> comes up and hits a homer. I mean, if he stays hot like he is, how are they going to send him back down? I know they're going to say playing time and this and that, but uh, I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm happy there's a good story in Oakland, though. The good story is Estuary Reese came back up and is raking. I mean, that's that's it. That's a good story. I mean, he's off to a good start, and I hope he continues in the, in the fans that are there. And the fans of the Oakland A's and who sticks with them after this year, they have someone to cheer for. And the A's are 7-10. and 10. The A's are hanging in there. They are not the White Sox. They are not the Marlins. Why? Why you guys just got to rub it in? Well, because face? there was a lot of debate. Some people were like, this team's going to lose a, a billion games. Season's not over, kid. I know. I know what Kratz is going to say. You and me had White Sox as worst record. We will hold Six, that. 600 bones coming our way, Scotty. And then the next day they traded Dylan Cease. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for that $600. It's early, but also I don't see anybody else. I'll cash out now. Games like they do. What did Yogi Berra say? It's getting late early? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just check out you know, FT Twitter last night. It was kind of on fire. You can just scroll through when you get a free chance. That would what happened yesterday? Be nice. We talked about them on the show. Oh, did we? People did you talked about it? Did you? I actually no, didn't just, talk that much about AJ. them. There, there are a lot of people oh, now. You know, when, when when a show starts to make its rounds, people start to make up either things that we say or things that the media say, and then you know, tell us that we need to apologize. Like, I, there's still like a couple people on comments that just constantly will comment on like our Otani Ipe kind of stuff and be like, you owe him an apology. I'm like, you're talking about the wrong show, bro. We yeah, didn't ever say Otani's bad. Not us. Here's, <laughs> Never. Here's what I, when I saw what AJ said yesterday about the White Sox went viral in the comments that people were saying, do you think if AJ wasn't on this show, we would talk about the White Sox more or less than the Rockies? 
It'd be about the same. No, probably. no. We would talk about them way more than the Rockies, and I'll tell you why. There's drama. Last year, they weren't just bad. It was a drama mess. Even when we had Chuck Garfine on yesterday, he said, like, that was a toxic mess clubhouse. Things like that make news, make headlines, get talked about on shows. The Rockies aren't good, but they don't have that. Like, they're, they're clean. It's, it's, good li- it's good living out there. They're, they're chilling. They're clean. It's nice. There's, sure. there's not nice. drama. Yeah. They didn't Colorado. have expectations either. The, the White Sox were supposed to be in their winning window. You know, the Rockies aren't. So The window got shut. It did. All right, let's bring on. I, I need a little wake up call, okay? So you've seen him on Pap's picks, the Pap Nosticator, joining us right now on FT Live. But this is actually the first time we've we've had Pap on since we officially announced him as an FT team member. So here he is, Pap. Welcome to the party. And where are you joining us from today? FTL, baby, foul territory family. <laughs> Dude, welcome to the family. Are you getting a tattoo? Are you getting a tattoo right now, Pat? No, we just finished. We just finished, man. Just in time. Just in time for the show. Wow. Wait, where? where, 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 Let's see it. I want to see this new tattoo. It's my wake tribute to wake. I'm a a messy stuff up here. Damn. Damn. All right. That is sick. That is sick. Yeah. I mean, just, just leave the done. shirt off. Might as well just leave the shirt yeah. off at this point. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I'll, uh, I'll look better with it on. Right here. <laughs> you got to love that. I mean, you, I you love it. A lot I mean, all I do way. is wear a hat for him when I play in golf tournaments. I mean, I haven't gone that far. Um, <laughs> Where's yours? My what? I don't have a tattoo, so I'm sorry. But that is sick. That Pat. is a sick I love one, that. Yeah. I love that. And you were yes. just there for, for you know, the first pitch, the ceremony, all of that. So yeah, um, we and we just got done with the marathon yesterday, man. It's been it's been crazy. I was walking to the game yesterday. Had a guy um, and nothing but a leopard thong, you know, on a um, skateboard drinking a or licking a lollipop or something. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> Did you run just, the marathon yesterday? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, hey AJ, in spring training, I used to tell, I said, man, look, I, I throw the ball to the plate. I don't run the ball to the plate. Let's go, man. I got one inning. Hey, did, did the Red Sox ask you if you wanted to play a little infield for them? The the infield defense is hurting right now, man. It is, man. Um, I think the whole team is hurting. Um, you know, I think they're they're just trying to find their ways. You know, it's like Alex Cora is trying to play chess with a, a lot of really good AL East teams without his queen, you know, like without his best piece. It's it's like virtually impossible. And um, the injuries, I don't know. I, I might go talk to him today and see like, man, we, we got to sacrifice a live chicken or something up in here or something because the injuries is all the shit that's been happening to them, man. So is Devers and O'Neal okay? I know, I mean, I know O'Neal's Canadian. He took eight stitches. Is he okay? Yeah, yeah, they're all good. Um, eight stitches, yeah, but he's got to go through. You know how shit, AJ. You got to go through concussion program. He's not coming right back. Um, I'd be surprised. They'll probably make a decision by game time if he can pass that protocol test when Devers do. So, and they're not winning. So, I, you're not going to press your two best players. And now um, it looks like to start the season off before the month of April, they're going to be down Trevor Story. Devers with a shoulder and now a concussion and their best hitter in O'Neal for concussion protocol as well. Remember, Bauer well, never came back from concussions, so you never know, man. Yeah, concussions are the real deal. I'm pretty sure you've had a couple concussions just based on how you act. But yeah. <laughs> they're not they're nine and eight. They're nine and eight. Like, are you just are you just starting the same are you starting the same story that you thought from the beginning of the year? Like it's not like they're sick, you know. They're six and twelve. They're not like a five and twelve team. They're nine and eight. So if they didn't have hey. these injuries, are you saying that they would be first in the AL East? No, no, no. By, so it was by, nine and eight. Have they peaked? Have they peaked at nine and eight? Oh, no question about it. To me, Kratz, I think they've peaked, especially when these injuries start. They're not a team that can like um, go like afford one injury after another. Man, they're bringing up 
what I call four A players. You know, they're they're great in triple A, but they can't get a big leaguer out. You know, so they don't have prospects like the Orioles, man. Um, in fact, my my guy that just got done doing my tattoo, man, he was like, "Oh, I love watching the Orioles play," and he's a lifelong Red Sox fan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, see, there you go. The Orioles well, are fun to watch. They are very fun to watch, and they're just like endless talent coming through on that team right now. Did you see what Kenley Jansen said about the baseballs? Yeah, and I don't know what y'all say, saw, but what I said after the show on Nessa was, I mean, if you don't like the the balls, you know, rub your own balls. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you said that on TV? Yeah, I mean, I I used to rub my own balls and get. I I try to get Pookie to say, "Hey, in the ninth inning, give these ball. Tell the clubhouse kid to give these balls to the umpire. Those are the ones I want to use." So you wait. You used to tell tell Pookie to give them to Billy, who half the yeah Pookie, who half the time Billy wasn't paying attention. He was like this on one knee in the stands, looking the wrong way. Who's that? The bad boy, Billy Broad. Yeah, yeah. 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 He was like, he was like the six. He was like fifty years old. He had had red hair, and he'd sit. He was one (laughs) knee the whole time, with the balls and the bat, and he'd sit there and he'd he'd, he'd game be over here, and he's like, yeah. But you know, like, and that's funny, AJ. You talk about that too, man, because like even the clubhouse kids, a lot of them they 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 text with me still, and and they're like, man, this guy like he don't like this and that. Rub your, uh, get him on. I mean. I don't have no problem with rubbing them myself, man. I love to rub my own balls. <laughs> hey, you check your junk. You're smart. True. I true. am. I'm very smart. Hey, you, um, I, oh, go ahead, Kratz. Oh, no, I was just going to say, do you think the balls are what's causing injuries? Do you think that's a, that's a legitimate gripe because the balls got smaller or slicker or you can't use your own stick? No, man, it's a, it, it's like, it, like, there's no right or wrong answer to this, Kratzy. In my opinion, it's a multitude of a bunch of things, man. Like, players nowadays, I don't care if it's pitchers trying to throw 100 every time on every pitch and every play of the game, or uh, hitters going out there swinging as hard as they can with as much launch and perfect angle. You know, I'm not a hitter, I can't get on that, but you know, you get my drift. And so, there's no going to be no longevity when, you know, like I remember my first All Star game with Mariana, and I said, "Hey, look, I, I I've always idolized you. You know, you're you're the greatest. I, I appreciate you what you've really done, and I'm making money now because of you. And uh, we just, I just need one thing, one piece of advice, and it was, you know, take care of yourself. Like, don't like." Learn to pitch. You don't have to strike everybody out. Learn how to pitch. And and I really took that into consideration, man. Yeah, but teams are valuing strikeouts, valuing velocity. You got to be working the weighted balls in the offseason. You have to be throwing nonstop. We had Alex Wood on earlier saying all these dudes are throwing year round. They're throwing hard as they can at all times. And you yeah, know, some I saw players. All that. Yeah. I saw all that, you know. But dude, look, here's the thing is, man, you know when you need punch outs, you get your punch outs when you know when you know when that scout is there, you want to the scout there, throw some ched, you know. I don't know. I, I just don't I don't get it. I, I don't I don't I don't. Punch outs get you paid. Dude, they do. Like I do. I, I, I know. I see. That's the thing is I understand that aspect of it too, I guess. But so is there anything we can do? Like, do you No one? We've talked about it now for the past week. Right. And the Strider news just became official the other day that he's out for the season for the Braves. What's the solution? Because no one has a plan. I don't think anything's changing anytime soon. Right. Front offices usually kind of take advantage of things and kind of suck them dry. It's like shifts. Uh, how long the game's got, right? They don't care. Their job is to win games, you know? And even if that means they cycle through arms and they only last for three years, it is what it is. What's the answer? Like, do we have to change rules? I was hearing a a few people say like the hook rule where if you leave your starter in, then you still have your DH, but once he comes out, then he's out. Some people mentioned expansion because that'll at least like thin out the talent pool a little bit. What do you think? Man, you know, I was talking with Jim Rice in the studio about this exact thing the other day. And, uh, this dude, I think he averaged 158 games for it's like a, a year. So he pretty much played every day. And so I was asking him about it. And, um, you know, I, I think that in, in today's day and age, it, it is so hard to say, man, 
go play go play football this season take it take some time off because guess what every other kid's doing it so there's no time off so um i didn't start pitching till i was a sophomore in college and and um that, I feel like that saved me bullets. I feel like it saved me bullets when I got into the big leagues and I was like, man, my arm feels pretty fresh. You know, I, I don't know. What about Angel Hernandez? How fresh is he? <laughs> wow. <laughs> man, um, you know, they're all going to get taken away, though, here right soon, correct? I mean, they can start challenging, and, and once they start losing so many challenges, won't that umpire get fired? There's, isn't there like a big thing coming? There, there is robo umps and maybe a challenge system, but not that part. That, see, that part I like. This is where we're looking for some new rules for you. That, that is a great call. Like if, if umps lose X amount of challenges, they get demoted. It'll never happen though, but I like that idea. Cause dude, I mean, he made the worst call like we've seen since they've tracked pitches like that. Kratz pointed out. It was almost what? Seven inches off the plate with wise? Four inches. Pat knows about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know, and I get that. And see, here's the thing: is is baseball is a game where like that that little bit matters. You know, that's that's a bit that's a big deal in the big leagues. So, um, I I I I've always been in favor of like the, the I think there's just going to be more of like accountability with the system and stuff. Just what I heard, you know. Um, I'm gonna try and go talk talk to Theo Epstein today up in his suite because I wanted to um, ask you know just check in with him and it's been a while number one but um, pick his mind you know they got him back here and, and then he was he was with MLB you know decipher some of these rules and stuff so um, I texted him I was like hey I'm gonna try and swing by out there today we'll see how the, the show goes but yeah I like that because Theo so he was working for the league for what maybe two years. And now he's yeah, back with the years, something like there. that. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he basically went to the league and said, Hey, I'm part of the problem with the front office groups that were causing all of this. So let me help be the solution. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like so, the con man, so, right. Or like the dudes that are like doing cyber security shit and, and, you know, hack everyone. And then they're like, all right, we're hiring you because you were the problem agent. So help us fix this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So back in the day, Joe West, they they would find you. So Joe would always find me because I always took too long. You know, especially in Boston, man. I wanted to hear my song. You know, I, you got I gotta let ship it up to Boston finish. You know what I mean? And, and the so, bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the yeah, floor it, was the OG one. That was 05. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, true that. Yeah. True that. Oh, so and, you uh, stole you stole that from Aaron Rowan, by the way. Just saying. Yeah, no, but, he did come out to that, but um, you know, so. Theo would be like, oh, man, fuck that fine. Fuck Joe West. You know, don't just here. We'll, we'll, they started paying him for me. But then after like, I think like 15 or 20 of them, and they're all like 10 grand a pop, you know, it's just like, uh, yeah, we got to change this up. Yeah, we can't keep paying these. And, uh, and that's when like I started knowing, man, like these rules are going to start coming more and more. Do you remember, did you ever get an equipment violation, Kratzy? Did you ever get a, you throw your helmet, you'd be pissed, you'd throw your glove, and they'd be like, the umpire, instead of kicking you, I would go, equipment violation, 250 bucks. Yeah. Equip, you threw your helmet, 250 bucks. That equipment made you violation. so much yell it out, right? Oh, that would just piss you off more. Yeah. That's like, Pap, you know, he's out there doing the jig, and they're like, equipment violation. Yeah, well, I think Joe had it in for me from the very beginning when I was a rookie, and I, I, uh, I kind of gave him a little like head to the nose, and like, I don't, I don't think I had like a, a a month in the big leagues, and he probably took that. You know how Joe was, man. He didn't take, he didn't like that. So, mm -mm. It, it was on, it was on ever since with me and Joe. You know. Yeah, we had Joe on the show once. He was he was uh, entertaining. Mm -hmm. He had some stories. It's, it's nice AJ's once they're neighbor. out, they can say I whatever mean, they want. That is that is AJ's neighbor. I mean, kind of. It's a big state. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's run Same. through picks. We have Pap live this time. First off, Pap, you've been a gem. It's been a very entertaining ride to see you in the sauna at Chuck E. Cheese and everywhere else. So. Let's go over the picks. First yeah. off, the free game of the day today is Nationals Dodgers streaming on the BetMGM app. Live streaming is available to all BetMGM customers who are logged in and have funded accounts. You see, by the way, the Nats took it to the Dodgers mm -hmm. yesterday. I bet you they were plus 200 something in all those games. Kratz is my guess. So, yeah, it was one, one game it was in that plus, series. Plus 190. They had Parker going. 
Parker is like he's the uh, he's just like reborn Kershaw with the. Nets. I don't know he stands. He stands on the mountain. Yeah. He has like his hands over his head. He's just standing he's there. Reborn like, Kershaw. What is this he dude doing? Doors. I like it. All right, so I that's do. the game. I too, too, Scotty. I like it. Yep, I like it. All right, so. Uh, FT Heater is up right now within the BetMGM Sportsbook app. This is what Kratz and me put together every Monday night to uh, figure out I was told out I was going to get a phone call. We texted it. AJ, but it was past his bedtime, so we'll, we're going to try next time. Braves by two-plus runs and uh, eight-plus total runs scored in that game. This is the goods. You only get it here. It's plus 190. We got it boosted to plus 240. It's literally within the app if you uh, have an account, so go check that out. That's the national game tonight between the Braves and the Astros. So, And that'll be our locks, which will make it pretty easy. We'll look at yesterday's locks. Kratz and me got back on the winning side of things. Cameron Maven made his debut and made the mistake of betting on the Marlins. The <laughs> Astros and Braves, of course, didn't hit. It was starting to like pick up late. but it Oh, didn't... it got to 6-1. to one. They had the bases loaded. I was like, oh. And he's I was ready to text, but I was like, I'm not saying shit because you're going to say I jinxed it. So you I did. left it alone. Oh, you know Pat he's going to say jinxed it. Of course, of course. I'm not going to jinx that it. Blame. What do you want me to say? He did jinx me. He did. Uh, all right. Just so by thinking about it, Pappy thought about my bet. I was watching that game just for that. Money bags are up. Um, we're still all up. Besides AJ, he has work to do. We'll, we'll get back on the well, way. That's coming today, Pap. Wait, do you see this one today? Right, we'll okay. I can't wait. I can't wait, man. It's going to be a big slam dunk too. Watch. <laughs> what do you got? I'm going first. Yeah. All right. So I'm putting 200 down to win. 1700 because I ain't no sucker. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bybee is pitching against your Red Sox, and I don't even care oh, who wins. He's but going just, on the Red Sox. Yeah. Now I know. listen, listen, I need a slug fest. Bybee, all them injuries for the Red Sox, five, over five and a half Ks, but he gives up over two and a half runs. Whitlock <laughs> gives up over two and a half earned runs. That's plus 850. So I'm putting 200 down to win 17 hunch. Okay. <laughs> uh, he doesn't even know. He's trying to enough. process it. I, I, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, but man, that's a long shot. Hey, you just keep betting on the Red Sox. I mean, I, they're they're sucking. I agree, and I'll keep betting on the White Sox because they suck too. No, I didn't bet. <laughs> I don't care who wins. I just need a lot of home. I need a lot of runs. That's it. Just runs early. I don't and care. Some punch a, outs. And, and, well, and some punches. Bybee, yeah, I figure well, Bybee will punch, punch out six. That's, you know, high fastball. I, I, I think you're good on the punch outs, but, um, man, maybe the wind's blowing out of Fenway. You know if the wind's blowing out of Fenway, you got a good chance of that. Yep. Okay. We'll be watching. Uh, I mean, I know you're going to pick the Royals against the White Sox and be like, oh, look at me go. I want another one. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, what do so, you got today? I, I got a three game parlay. I got the uh, White Sox. I mean, uh, the Royals playing the White Sox, and I got the Dodgers. I mean, the Dodgers lose again to the Nats. I don't, I don't know what what happened. Like, Glass now just was just this one of those games where he didn't have it. So um, I'm going him and my third set of shit. I forget the uh, third one. Baltimore, Philly. right? Philly. Philly. You got Dodgers, Royals. Oh yeah, I'm going Philly against the Rockies. Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rockies, they fucking suck too. Yeah, that's that's what I got. <laughs> plus nine, plus one. I did it. I did it while I was half asleep in the chair. So we're plus one ninety one. I love it. Hundred bucks wins me one hundred ninety one dollars. Just a hundred today? Just wow, 100? I like that. That's yeah, what I easy, do. Easy. Yeah, I gotta go easy now. Yeah, I like it. You a sucker, bro. Steady mid. You a sucker. Mid, <laughs> mid, <laughs> mid, <laughs> mid <laughs> you sucker. All right, well, there's the picks and the first bet offer um, at uh, up to $1,500 back in bonus bets is on the Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of Foul Territory. F-O-U-L. I'm talking in my head now. Uh, F-O-U-L. Download the app. um, Sign up and deposit at least $10 into your account. Place your first wager and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. If that happens, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. There it is. Thank you, Jamie Foxx. Very excited. Jamie today on a Tuesday. Pap, good stuff, man. Can we, we see it again? Can we see it one more time on the way out? I mean, AJ uh, wanted I'll, to be I'll there. Put it up on Twitter, man. You made me take my shirt off. I All right, do that. Do that. Give, it, show, man. Give, give us a post. Give us a post. Show everyone. Or we can That's put, good, put it up. FT, FTF, man. Foul Terry family, hey, baby. Love Pap, y'all. Pat, Love what's y'all. on pregame today? Give me, give, me, give me something to watch for you on pregame tonight. Um... 
mainly I've been talking about rubbing my own balls, aliens, and Sasquatch, because there's really not much great baseball to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, that <laughs> Nessin has kind of become a different network, and and I'm all for it. It's much more entertaining with Pap. So we'll be watching Pap. Yeah. Great to have you all with right, the guys. fan, man. Appreciate you. Peace. See you, Pap. See you. Uh, the the great Jonathan Papelbon, our closer, part of the FT fam. Uh, we announced him a couple weeks ago. That was the first time we had him on, though. We had obviously Pap's picks, but I mean, he's epic. He is epic, and he gets into the gambling stuff. He does. He loves it. He does it. Mm -hmm. He's into it. Brings some energy. Um, AJ's yeah. pick brings energy today. AJ's pick is energy. My pick What's is it? my pick is going to have me biting my nails. Yeah, that's not a that's not a no unless it's like six to. But see, the problem is if they as a, is a, as I need Bybee to like slowly give up three sweet so punches out dudes along the way, <laughs> and I just need Willock to give up a three run homer like in the first. Yep. It could be it could be three to three and going to the twentieth inning. I don't care, but as long as Bybee gets six and they both give up three earned runs, and we're gosh, I'm a, I'm gonna have more money than all y'all. Y'all all gonna be suckers. <laughs> and when you pick uh, when you pick the starters, you, you watch half the game, then you don't have to deal with the rest of the Red Sox later on. You know, you're gonna watch five, six innings. You're not gonna watch nine. I mean, and listen, I know Whitlock's been good too. He's he hasn't given up much this year, so I'm I went out on a limb. <laughs> he did indeed. All right, we're we're gonna go over um, a little injury suck action, but and there was a weird one that we didn't get to yesterday. But first off, we'll step aside for a quick thirty. DRB. Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of Foul Territory. Unified Healing is an innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System, or EE System. This technology promotes wellness and deep relaxation, and there are hundreds of locations across the globe. Interested in experiencing the EE System technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash foul to learn more and find a center near you. That's U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash F-O-U-L. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including EE system. Okay, so we're going to get to the Rangers injury list here because it's long. Rangers are fine right now. They're, they're hanging in there, but it, it's one of those injuries that just hit them that you just can't afford, and it does pop up a few times per year. So let's go over it. Injuries suck. <laughs> Latest pitching injury for the Rangers, Brock Burke. After an outing, punched a wall, breaks his hand, hits the shelf. I think that was going to be pretty obvious once that occurred. Never going to end well for a pitcher. Can you at least use your? No, he used his non-pitching hand. Oh, he did use his non-pitching yeah, hand. He learned from he learned from Bull Durham. Okay. Crash Nuke Davis taught him well. We, we, if you would have watched the game on Saturday, we talked about this. How he learned from Nuke Lelouch. That, you, know, you guys said this. Yeah, because he did it on Friday night. He punched, broke his knuckle. He broke his boxer knuckle, punching something. So, yeah, sucks. So, but Got to learn how to punch stuff, kids. Quicker recovery, I guess. Yeah, fr so Friday he gave up four and runs, three hits, and recorded a couple outs against Houston in that five-run seven. Texas still won the game. That was the high-scoring game. And then the prior outing didn't go well either. And I believe that was against Houston too. I don't think he recorded any outs. but But he goes down. They had just called up Justin Foskey pretty recently. He's got the oblique. He goes down. And we do Josh have a graphic. Josh Young is down. Kennedy Landry, I think, covers the team. I've seen his work. Here we go. Rangers on the IL. So you have a starting rotation of DeGrom, Scherzer, Molly, Bradford. That can win a World Series. Relievers of Sabors, Burke, Jonathan Hernandez, and Carson Coleman. Not bad. And position players of Josh Young, Nathaniel Lowe, and Justin Foscu. That is a lot of talent on the IL. My point, Kratz, is for teams that come up with excuses on why they're not good, look at the Rangers. I mean, yeah, if the Rangers don't make the playoffs, we can look back at this. But I think they're going to make the playoffs. And they've built themselves a team that has depth and can withstand injuries. You know? It's the point of your offseason. Yes, you might have talent. Ah, we're good. We're good. No, you're all in the fifth inning. 
you're all in the fifth inning, like the Co like the Cubs were saying. If you have an opportunity to add a Michael Lorenzen, you do it because of this list. Yes, they knew those starters were going to be out. Yes, you know they know that some of them will come back this year. They know DeGrom will be back. They know that Scherzer will be back. But these injuries happen. So you go out and and spend 7 to $12 million on free agents that are out there. You don't hope Jack Leiter does well. Nothing against Jack Leiter. But – you need, you need, what was it, like an average of the World Series winners in the last 10 years? I think they've averaged, it's either 50 or 52 players playing on their team in the big leagues. Not 40, which is on the roster, 52 averaged different players. So that's what you need. You need that depth. And if your depth can be a Michael Lorenzen, if your depth can be Jordan Montgomery, it pushes the other guys down a little bit lower and now all of a sudden they're going to get called up they're going to get a full season yeah by the way the rangers offense has been slow lately and they won a one nothing game against the tigers yesterday michael lorenzen gave them half that game mm -hmm. Coming yeah that's off why you make those neck. pickups you had a bad neck you did mm -hmm. bad neck. yeah that's that's why there's that's what he was on the il with a neck it was the neck mm -hmm. and it was late late signing IL, right Phantom IL to get ready for the season. Yeah. Who am I to say? Who am I to say? Epler IL. So Kennedy Landry, by the way, is um, she's a Rangers uh, beat writer for MLB.com. So, and I have read her work. Just wanted to clarify that. Um, not a rando fan. Good writer. <laughs> but yeah, it's a long position, uh, long list of um, players on the injured list right now for Texas. And yeah, the, the whole punch in the wall thing never works out. Kelnick had that last year. That was the big one, probably, that I could think of with the frustration. Mm -hmm. it happens every year. You hear somebody doing something. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure you guys saw that a million right? times. Or did he punch the cooler? Kicked. He kicked the cooler, broke kicked. his foot. He yeah. The cooler, yeah. But if you think about it, it kind of was a good thing for his career. He's got been up and down. Range. He got traded. Got traded do you ever, do you ever better team. bust yourself up? Kratz, mad? You never, get, you never got mad, did you? I definitely got mad. You but just didn't you didn't throw, punch did you stuff. throw anything or you never threw anything? One time I threw a ball through a window going down the going down the dugout. Straight and? through. I was so pissed. I was so pissed it hit the window because it was a metal door and it was just one of those like windows like that. And I threw it down the hallway, but the hallway coming from the dugout up to the to the clubhouse, it was like a ramp. And so I skipped it. I skipped it. Somebody made an error. It was the eighth inning. We ended up blowing the lead. So I came in with the final out, and I fired it down the dugout, or fired it down behind the dugout, and it bounced. It hit the – I mean, one perfect bounce straight up, shattered the window, had like the – had the metal bars in the glass. So pissed. Did it hit like an analytics nerd on the other side of the door who was like, I just wanted to show you chase rate was above average. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what doesn't go through your mind when you are so pissed. And like, you don't, you don't think about the fact that you could have hurt somebody that was on the other side of the door. You don't think about the fact that after you strike out in double a to Anibal Sanchez, who's a 20 year old rookie, you come in and you just destroy the bat rack with your brand new Carolina club. Yes, yeah, if you knew, I, remember what, what, I know, but if you knew what Anibal Sanchez was going to become, you probably would have taken it a little easier on yourself. Hmm. Not Maybe. in that moment, right? I learned. I learned my lesson young on this one. Double A. What'd you do? I didn't get a bunt down. And I took my helmet and I threw it in the bat rack, and it hit perfectly and bounced back and hit me right in the bridge of the nose. Oh, blood, tears. You know, from when it's you amazing to me when guys yeah. when guys mm. do it more than once, when guys make those mistakes more than once. I made both those mistakes in the minor leagues, and I controlled my anger pretty well after those mistakes. But when guys do things, when guys punch a wall twice, you're like, what? Like, I, I just learned how to throw things better, where to throw them where it wouldn't bounce back and hit me. Go in the go in the bat room and 
fire stuff where there's no one around and it can't really bounce around and hit you or, you know, in the tunnel. Alex I broke, Rios, I broke many a helmet, trust me. Alex Rios and Chase Utley, before they changed to the Kevlar helmets, were the two guys that I saw take their helmet. And I thought they were going to start pulling them apart. They pushed them together until it snapped, threw them in the trash can. And now kids rage quit. That's their frustration. Oh, it was. It was like face this person when, online when they went to the when they went to the uh, Kevlar. That was like a that was like a badge of honor. How can I break this thing? I was trying to figure out how I could break it. You had to murder. <laughs> like, hey, I, oh, just, I, or just, <laughs> you had to know what to throw it against. <laughs> yep. Not a TV. Don't do that. No, don't throw it against the TV. I've seen guys do that. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's slap. <laughs> All right, so first off, a reminder to everyone, the next three days of foul territory, still the same, one to three Eastern live. People that catch it later, it's the same. It's just that we're in a different location. We're in Cincinnati, and we'll be at the BetMGM Sportsbook at the Banks Wednesday and Thursday. Todd Father is probably on a flight pretty soon with the rest of our crew behind the scenes. AJ's got some golfing to do with famous people. Kratz has some kratzing to do where he'll still be on the show so everything's pretty normal from kratz world and we'll be at great american ballpark on friday and i'm hoping that we'll have a little mike trout hangout a little you're ellie de la be able cruz to get hangout Wednesday or thursday yeah we're, we're gonna have guests normal guests yeah but no one from the teams uh no because they're not there oh they're on the road yeah okay the wednesday Sorry. they're on the road they're so like the seattle. angels are mm-hmm. who's in seattle the reds the uh, Angels Thursday's are, probably an off day, I'm guessing. Yeah, Thursday. Travel. Uh, th- Thursday is an off day, or no? I would assume if they're coming from no, Seattle. No, the Angels are playing Thursday in Tampa Bay for the, for the Reds. I was just thinking. I'm, for about, the Reds. I'm talking about the Reds. I'm yeah, yeah, the, the Reds. Reds are off. The Angels are in Tampa Bay. They get in Thursday night mm, at like yeah, nine. Yeah, that makes sense. So, okay. Mike Trout, we'll by that. the way, keeps hitting dingers. If you were wondering, mm-hmm. Mike he had Trout a two run dinger last night too for the lead. That two was run. hard. You know what I want? I want apologies from all the freaking fans all over the place that just just throw absolute garbage at Trout on socials. Absolute garbage. Enough. They're like, oh, he's his trade value shot, blah, blah, blah. Relax, okay? You don't want Mike Trout on your team? Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we backed that man up all offseason long. Now, we didn't always back him up the way that some Angels fans liked because we said that he should get traded while he's still in some – prime years of his career but still that man can swing the freaking bat he is still one of the best bats in major league baseball no doubt and he has not the best lineup support you know that's the guy you're circling like over and over again guys he doesn't beat us rendon had an extra base hit yesterday great good for him (laughs) um and hot sheet is coming up next it is andy pajes day it is Jack Leiter call-up news where he'll pitch on Thursday. It is Forrest Whitley getting called up. Uh, when will Jackson Holiday be called up? He's already. I already know the answer to that one. That is old. Take that away. Thank you. <laughs> AJ is actually really good at checking our graphics. He's good at reading. We found that out from Ken. Mar- mm-hmm. Marlins are three and fourteen. They were four and thirteen on the list, but they're three and fourteen. Just for the record, I just want everyone to know that. Yes, I see that too. We had two errors today, and don't worry, you don't have to point it out because AJ will do it. <laughs> I try to do it on the chat because so yeah. that way nobody notices, but there's – It's fine. just proves that, contrary to what Ken says, I can read. Yes, and people make mistakes. Really, you're a really good reader. You are. Oh, if we put one thing off in you know a YouTube clip that gets posted, I usually catch it right away because a fan will immediately mm-hmm. get so excited in the comments to be like, I'm the first person to point this out. And you know what? That's fine. I'm, I'm – I'm okay with that. You know, they're probably a teacher. It's like grading test papers. I don't catch oh, mistakes. No. I think you all are perfect. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, by the way, um, two things. One, Justin Verlander was supposed to be in the injury suck. He is pitching on Friday. I don't know if it's official or not, but he's probably going to pitch on Friday. So is Jordan Montgomery. Friday's going to be awesome. And uh, Framber Valdez is scheduled to come back the week after. Okay. Allegedly. Maybe, possibly. 
I don't know. Maybe. Ooh. They're hoping. Let's just say they're hoping. So the Astros are kind of circling the wagons. What do you do, AJ? You put what, something in a bucket and you put hope in another bucket? See which one fills up faster? Hope in one hand, wish in the other. See which fills up faster. Mmm. That's what I needed on this Tuesday. Subscribe. If you subscribe in one hand and you <laughs> poop in a bucket put in the Kratz's other. Put Kratz's hat, whatever, because we didn't do Kratz's oh, hat. Oh, crap. Right? Real quick, Which Kratz. one weighs more? Real quick. It's just a regular Monday through Thursday Rail Riders hat. Scranton Rail Riders. I feel like you've had that down. one a lot. No. no, this is the standard one. This is just yeah. standard. This is just the regular, boring, everyday, goes with the pinstripes. What Rail size Riders is that? Hat. Can you see what size that thing is? Seven and five eighths. I told you. That's it? That ain't yeah. that big of a head. No. I told you. Hey. Seven, I thought you five, had like eight. eight. Like I thought you had like Tyler Flowers, Bruce Bochy. Happy birthday. By the way, Boach head. I thought you no. had like an eight plus head. No. Let's see. Let's see. Mid. That's not that's a that's a very average size head, seven and five eighths. A lot of lot of surface area though. I mean, let's just be honest. It's yeah. a lot of surface area. <laughs> it's bigger than it looks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Tuesday what? legend AJ Przinski will be back next week. Bye.